Hello, everyone. Alongside Hewan Fitzgerald, I'm Evan Sherrard here on a beautiful night for soccer. It's 57 degrees down here at Rochfield in Boston, Massachusetts. A little bit windy, and Hewan, we have a very special one tonight. It's the first ever playoff game in men's soccer history for Emerson College. What can we expect tonight from Emerson? Um, I think it's going to be a good game from both teams, but for Emerson, they just have to stick with their guns of being patient. They don't have a lot of shots throughout most of the games, but when they do take a shot, it is pretty likely to go in the goal or near it, so they just need to keep that up against MIT's defense and hopefully catch them sleeping and put one in the back of the net. Yeah, and you mentioned the play style of Emerson being more patient and more accurate. How would you describe the way that MIT plays, and how will their differing tendencies affect the way that this match plays out? Uh, well, MIT is the opposite. They throw a lot of shots towards the goal with a efficiency that's not great. A lot of their shots don't go in. So I think for Emerson, they just need to understand that MIT is going to put a lot of shots up, and the defense needs to stay ready for that. Um, but I think if they can just stick with their game plan, play good defense, and hopefully find a shot that gets in the goal, I think they'll be good to go. Any last things that you have to say about anything you expect to see from this game? Obviously, you mentioned MIT takes a lot of shots. Not all of them hit on net, but is there anything that you think that MIT can do, especially since they're the three-seed, Emerson's the two-seed, Emerson favored here. Is there anything that you can see that MIT needs to do to pull up an upset? I think... With the shot, the amount of shots that they take, um, the goalie today for Emerson, uh, Ethan Fitzsimmons, between the sticks, um, he does tend to let in a lot of goals. So I think if MIT peppers the goal and they f make and Fitz makes a mistake and something s squeaks in, then that's their chance of coming away with a win here. Now we go down to Jake Kelly with the PA announcing. Tonight's match features the visiting number three seeded MIT Engineers and your number two Emerson Lions. <laughs> the New Mac Roads good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, derogatory comments, or other intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated and are grounds for removal from the site of competition. Also, consumption or possession of alcoholic beverages is prohibited. Now it's time to meet tonight's starting lineups. First for the visiting number three seeded MIT Engineers. A sophomore defender from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, number three, Arun Kirk. A sophomore midfielder from Santa Clara, California, number four, Nathan Guntvet. A senior midfielder from Ashburn, Virginia, number eight, John Flynn. A junior midfielder from Winfield, Illinois, number 14, Garrett Robinson. A senior midfielder from Los Angeles, California, number 18, Victor Pretzky. A senior forward from Portland, Oregon, number 19, Alex Wheeler. A junior defender from Ann Arbor, Michigan, number 24, James Simon. A junior defender from Carlsbad, California, number 29, Aiden Howden. A graduate student defender from Andover, Mass, number 31, Andre Dumitrescu. And in goal for MIT, a senior from Lawrenceville, Georgia, number one, Parth Desai. <laughs> MIT is coached by Ken Bovell, and he is assisted by Ivan Jadamulia and Jeremy Cowham. And now the starters for your number two, Emerson Lions! A junior midfielder from Annandale, New Jersey, 
number six, Ben Neeming. A graduate student midfielder from Missoula, Montana, number eight, Skyler Stark Ragsdale. A senior midfielder from South Windsor, Connecticut, number 10, Shane Beatro. A freshman midfielder from Berkeley, California, number 15, Chora Del Benico. A senior defender from Berkeley, California, number 16, Aiden Ferguson. A freshman defender from Encinitas, California, number 19, Wesley Jackson. A freshman midfielder from Pittsfield, Mass, number 20, Gabe Rich. A sophomore midfielder from Atlanta, Georgia, number 22, Gregory Kopanezos. A senior defender from Kiev, Ukraine, number 23, Bo Fikens. A freshman defender from Gilroy, California, number 29, Kay Ballot. <coughs> and in goal for your number two, Emerson Lyons, a sophomore from Harvard, Mass., number one, Ethan Fitzsimmons. Emerson is coached by Daniel Tolson, and he is assisted by Lee McCursey and Colin Connolly. Fans, at this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. And welcome. Collegiate soccer fans, welcome to the playoffs. If you're ready, make some noise. And a thank you to our excellent PA address announcer, Jake Kelly, with the enthusiasm here. The first playoff match ever played here at Rochfield, Emerson College. Excitement in the air. We see the team all around. Yes, the first, the first playoff men's game at Rochfield. I apologize, and the correction has been made. Of course, Hewen, this is a big match. Obviously, every match gets bigger. If they can continue on, they will be in the championship game against Babson. This is it. This is what you play for, and this is what they came to play for when they came to this school. They've turned this program in. Here's their first chance at the playoffs. What are your expectations? I mean, obviously, it's an exciting game. They've never been in the playoffs before. For the seniors, this is their kind of last ride of maybe their career, so they're going to want to come out firing. Um, obviously, there's going to be some nerves. First playoff game in the school's history. You want to come out. You want to compete. You want to do well, win for your school. But they just got to let that go and just play soccer how they know how to play soccer. And hopefully the pieces fall for them and they're able to pull out a victory. 
of course, and some players to watch in this game, of course, the sophomore midfielder Gregory Capanesos, and of course, like you mentioned, the senior and graduate student Aiden Ferguson and Skylar Starks Ragsdale, respectively, in what could be their last games of their careers, hopefully putting it all out on the field tonight and maybe just playing another match against Babson with a little bit of luck and, of course, skill is necessary. About to get underway here at Rochfield, we see MIT in their huddle getting ready to come out and play potentially their last game of the season. Rami Bikdash, a star scorer for them, will not be active for the second consecutive game. He led the team tied for goals with Garrett Robinson with five. Garrett Robinson is starting in this at midfielder as we're about to get ready to go. We now see Alex MIT. Weiler. MIT will kick off to begin the first half. And as Jake Kelly put so well, MIT about to kick off. Jake Weiler to take it. And we're underway here at Rochfield. Playoff soccer underway as we see the ball played back now into MIT's own end. Back pass. Here we see some tic-tac-toe passing here early for MIT. Along the right sideline. Trying to get anything through Emerson's stifling defense early. Pressured on the right side there, able to get it up to Weiler. And quickly played out, and so we will see a throw in for MIT. On the right sideline, it's thrown in. Hedrick Meyer passes it off to the middle of the field. A pass back. This one intended here to move the play forward. Along the left sideline, they push it up. It stays in, and Weiler's back out. It's booted out of play, and we will see a throw-in, but for who here? It'll be MIT. Throw-in quickly. MIT trying to mount their first attack of the match. On the left side of the pitch. Booted out and cleared by Kapanesos. Out of play it goes. And on MIT's part of the sideline, we see another throw-in. Third throw-in of the match so far. Thrown in on the left side and booted out again, so we see some scrums early. Well-headed play by Emerson. Back near the center line. And they'll play patiently, trying to get a better attack. On the right side of the pitch, dribbled into the center. A through pass into Weiler and intercepted by Emerson. A through pass that didn't quite work out. Intercepted back in their own end and they'll reset. MIT trying to build up in another attack. Booted through to the center. There's Weiler. He cuts to the middle, faces another Emerson defender and is able to get it away to the right side of the pitch we go. Trying to mount an attack. Here comes MIT falling down on the right side of the pitch as an Emerson defender. A quick move and a pass through that didn't work out for him. Booted away and cleared. And once again, another throw in for MIT. Definitely a stifling defense as we start the game for Emerson. And I think that's what they're going to want to do the rest of the game. Put pressure on MIT, force a turnover, and hope something sneaks across the other side of the field for a goal. Yeah, and of course, you and we mentioned, as there is another boot out of play, we see yet another throw in. We mentioned that. MIT likes to take a lot of shots, and early they're playing more patiently, which may be the way that they need to play to win this game, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think they're definitely, they're not forcing anything right now. Their passes have been a little iffy so far, but they're not trying to force anything with Emerson's stifling defense. Um, the defense has done a good job of putting pressure, so I think they're adjusting their game plan in. for that a little bit. Well said. MIT trying to sustain their attack. They will regroup near the center line. On the left side of the pitch, they move it back. Played across to the right side. A through pass deep, looking for an opportunity. Coming on is Fitzsimmons, oh. a collision. But he's able to hold on. And crisis averted for Emerson early. It's great goalkeeping from Fitz there. Way to hold on to the ball after a scary collision. Nothing nothing hurt for Emerson there. Especially for his first action. 
As we see a boot across to the right side of the pitch, here comes Emerson trying to mount their first attack of the match. A nice pass alongside into the penalty box, but easily played by Desai. And we see a throw, and now here comes MIT. Through the middle, played to the right side of the pitch, back and up through the middle. A through pass to the right side. Here comes Robinson, but out of play it goes. A throw in now for MIT. Like we mentioned, chippy so far. A lot of smaller plays that are being shut down. Yeah, I think there's definitely going to be some chippiness early on. Playoff, first playoff game for both teams. Um, it's gonna, they're fighting for a place in the championship. They're going to want to play hard and make something happen, so there's definitely going to be some chippiness because of their aggression early on. And a play off the head and another throw in on the right side. Getting closer to the Emerson penalty box is MIT as they play it through the middle. Robinson tries to take a strike. And it ricochets off of a few Emerson legs. And Fitzsimmons is able to corral this easily. Good communication there. Uh, I think for Emerson that's going to be really important. Because of MIT's shot, um, how high how many shots they take in a game. Communication is definitely going to be important with rebounds and stuff. Fitz communicating with his defenders to make sure that nothing goes awry. So I think so far early on, good communication that's going to be important for the rest of the game. Thank you, Hewen. And now we see another throw in for MIT, this time on the right side of the pitch. And Emerson's able to take this right away. Played off a few bodies, ricocheted off of a face. Weiler falls down, and a whistle. And a free kick now for MIT setting up. First foul of the day. I'm interested to see if the refs are going to let them play a little bit in the playoff atmosphere or if he's going to be tight on the close calls. Definitely something to watch as this is played through the middle. Emerson gets it away. Tough collision here. Nice move to play it to the middle. This intended for an opening here comes Emerson trying to push an attack. Played along the right side, a through ball into the corner, and it will stay in. Capanesos able to handle this, but not quite as it bounces out. Past the end line, we see Desai take this for MIT. That was a good attack early on. Good spacing, good communication. I think that's going to be important for the Lions going forward. Because they don't take many shots, they're going to need to communicate well and have good passes in order to make something happen in the box. Now along the right side of the pitch, MIT handles trying to keep Emerson away from their net mouth. They play it safe. Back into the penalty box they go. Trying to find an opening. He does find one. It closes quickly, but they're able to get another pass right through. One touch passing doesn't work out. A throw in for Emerson coming up. So far early on, MIT's passes have not been the best, and I think if they're going to want to be successful in the rest of the game, they're going to have to clean their passes up to make sure that they put pressure on the Lions' defense. Deeming receives the throw in from Kapanesos, but quickly played out. Robinson has this one for MIT. And now quickly handled by Emerson, but very quickly again, knifed away by MIT, and here comes the rush. An attack developing, and then taken down right there. Emerson playing out on the left side. And another pass out of bounds. And so we continue to see the chippy play. Some nerves maybe playing a role here, Hewan. Definitely. I think the nerves are going to be there. They're probably going to be there the whole game. It'll, it'll get easier the more the game goes on, but there's definitely going to be nerves from both sides as this is an important playoff game to, to get a spot in the championship. Played through to the left side of the pitch now. A boot over the head of Robinson. To the middle it goes. MIT still handles. Emerson swarming. And MIT to safety along the backside of the pitch. One touch passing now for MIT. A through pass towards Robinson. Intercepted and Fitzsimmons has to go for this. Able to haul it in. And try and play it off. Robinson... Moves the ball into the corner of the field. 
a little shaky there early on. Like I said earlier, communication is going to be key for the Emerson defense here, and I think there was a little lap, lapse in communication there, so they're going to want to clean up the back line communication just a bit if they want to have some success on the defense tonight. Certainly, and there we see a little communication between the referees and Emerson and MIT. They were both confused on what the ruling would be here. Call is a corner kick. And Jake Kelly so kindly says that we've got a corner kick coming up here for MIT. We see the Emerson Lions getting into their defensive positioning. I think Fitz definitely made the right call. I could see him trying to throw the ball off of MIT's player. Obviously, the refs decided that that was not successful and that they ruled a corner, but I think overall that was a smart heads-up play by Fitz to try and get a goal kick for Emerson. Guntvent to take this in from the corner. Ball is in play. Now a header on the way. Able to rebound is MIT on the left side of the pitch. They move it on the outside of the penalty box, looking for a penetrative pass on the inside. Managing two defenders and still has the ball. And it finally goes out. We will see what appears to be another corner for MIT here. This the one... This is important for MIT. They need to put pressure on Emerson early, try and find a hole in the defense, and try and get those shots on goal and see if one sneaks in, and they're doing a good job of putting the pressure on here early. Whipped in by Robinson, bounces off a few skulls, and we will see a play here by the backside of MIT. Centered into the middle and quickly fought off by Emerson. Looping pass, batted down by a head. Played back into MIT's half of the field. And deking a defender. And another deke. And now a pass on the sideline, still inbounds. A slide tackle and a stoppage. Very chippy early on here. I did not see an initial foul on the play. I feel like he slipped on the turf a little bit. And then the second slide was very aggressive. I'm surprised the ref is not showing a card here. And so as the players get set, we see here what looks to be a free kick, but I can't quite tell, I can't quite see the sideline. It is, it's a free kick here. From the right side of the pitch, it's played into the center box, headed away and away from danger. And Emerson, seeing the frequent shots that we're talking about before the game, and we're seeing that so far they've been able to fend them off. What do you think about this? I definitely think the defense has done their job so far. MIT is putting a lot of action in the box. They've had two corner kicks. This is their third and that goal kick. And Emerson is doing a good job so far of keeping the ball away from the goal and making MIT put up some more shots. A corner in from the left side going to center. Bounced away off of a head. And played on to the right side of the pitch. MIT tries to get inside. Good defense so far. Good form on the left side. And Emerson trying to get it away from Robinson. They do. MIT handles now near midfield. Into Emerson's half. Weiler plays this back. Along to the back right side of the pitch. On the left side now. Playing further up, trying to get by in the corner. And a scrum left side, a quick throw in here for MIT, trying to catch Emer Emerson on their heels. Played into the center. No opportunity here for MIT. We see another scrum. And it'll be played off and quickly taken away by Emerson. And now here comes an attack. which is going to be stifled in the right side of the field here for Emerson. But a quick little play. Played now to the left side, middle, Weiler. Moving to the left, up forward, trying to get by two defenders. An excellent slide tackle there by Ben Deeming. And now a call for a card, but nothing there. So MIT. far, Go ahead. the refs 
are letting them play a little bit. Not many fouls called. You can see the chippiness there, and the refs are allowing it to happen. MIT on another attack. Fakes a shot. Moves it back to the right side, just outside of the penalty box. MIT trying to attack. And once again, Emerson clears. Looking like an opportunity developing here for Emerson. Able to keep it in on the left side of the pitch. Tripped up and taken away by MIT. No foul here. Move through to the center. Robinson quickly kicks it off. Weiler controls. Emerson member falls down. Hands up in the air. A referee makes a call. And an argument to be had. Robinson steps in as well. We see Ragsdale, Starks Ragsdale. And a little conference in the Emerson side of the field with the referee. I think Weiler we can definitely see the teams that we expected to see today. Emerson very, very stout on defense so far. They haven't had a lot of action in the offensive half of the field. MIT, the opposite of that, very, very offensive today. A lot of shots towards the goal, not a lot of action on defense. And I think that's what we're going to see throughout the rest of the game. And the chippiness adds to that a little bit with the refs being pretty open about the fouls that they're calling. And we are seeing, like you said, a lot of shots from MIT early. We have yet to see Emerson's attack in full form. Now a shot from the free kick blocked by the front line and cleared away by Emerson College. Trying to work with some room is Dumitrescu. Through to the center. One touch passing for MIT, moving it along. That left side so dangerous with so many Emerson defenders. And a potential opportunity will go past the end line, and we will see Fitzsimmons with another handle. More good communication there from the defense. Um, like I said, Emerson's going to want to keep that up if they're going to want to have some defensive success in this game. And so far, so good on the communication Aspect. And Hewan, it's MIT has not been short of opportunity. It has seemed like Emerson, when it seems like they're in danger of an opportunity against them, has been able to communicate and get informed just in time to make a stop. And I think that's what their game plan was coming into this. We know that MIT puts up a lot of shots, and I think the defense was prepared for that. So they knew that it was going to be aggressive from the outset, and they've done a good job to combat that so far in the game. Now uh, we're having a throw-in in MIT's side. Lots of white shirts in the area. Emerson able to come up with the ball briefly. A weak-footed pass will be played now into center by an MIT man, taken away by Emerson. And on the back line will begin the attack. Another good defensive play by MIT to quickly stymie the attack. A play and a flag. And we see a stoppage. What will the referee decide? Ooh, the a yellow card. Has pulled a yellow card. Interesting here early on with how he's been letting them play. Um, there definitely was some contact there. I thought he got to the ball first, but obviously the ref thought different. And we see a card only 15 minutes into the game here. And so Ben Deeming has the first card of the match, a yellow card for Deeming. Definitely an impact player. And now MIT will with a free kick. They move it over to the right side of the pitch here. Looking for a center. Quickly taken away by Weiler on a back pass by Emerson. To the center. Quick pass along the left side, and they will retry. We just saw a turnover there from the Lions, and I think with MIT's aggressiveness on the goal, they're going to want to try and limit their turnovers and prevent MIT from getting the opportunity to send a through ball in and start a chance in the box. So limiting turnovers is going to be a, important for the Lions going forward here. MIT member thought that they had a throw in, but this is Emerson's ball. A throw into the middle side. We see a play through center. Outlet pass here. 
for Kapanesos with speed. Along the right side, trying to form an attack. Off of a knee in the air, Kapanesos battling for the ball. But we see the call go against Emerson. Kapanesos jogs back, and MIT takes a free kick. Booted, well kicked off of Weiler's head and out past the sideline and a throw in for Emerson. Kapanesos throws in and we're back underway. Played along to the left side of the pitch for Emerson. Aiden Ferguson. Passes it up the left side, a stutter step, and he's moving along the left side of the pitch, playing through, quick attack. Figured out by MIT, and Emerson, after a play off a foot, will get a throw in. Trying to catch, flat-footed. Here comes Emerson in the attacking area. Just inside the penalty box, they move out. A good defensive stand there by MIT to keep them away from getting a shot on goal. MIT's first defensive action of the game, for the most part, they did a good job there of shutting down Emerson's offensive attack. Opportunity coming up for Briseski and instead a weak shot on goal taken by Fitzsimmons. He'll carry and throw and Emerson can start again along the back line. Kapanesos available on the right side looking for an opportunity. A deep through pass which MIT will handle. Trying to get an advantage is Jora Del Banco. I think we're definitely seeing Emerson's game plan early. They're playing really good defense so far and they're putting through balls up to the towards the box and I think that's their strategy going forward. Just try and see if something can happen in the box and see if they can squeak a goal through. Along the midfield stripe now. Back on defense briefly, but the ball goes out of play. Past the end line. A new ball is kicked to Fitzsimmons to use. He'll carry back towards the goal box and get ready to quickly kick it in here to Ben Deeming. Deeming through the middle. Passed along back to the right side. Feekins plays this back to Deeming along the back line. Along the left side now. Potential opportunity shot down, and now here comes Robinson with some speed. A chance for MIT, and it's blocked, and it'll go out of play. Excellent recovery by Emerson. As they say in sports so often, defense wins championships, and Emerson is showing that early here. A break in the back line, comeback defense, slide to block the shot and force a corner kick. That is what Emerson is going to have to do the rest of the game if they want to force a counterattack, and hopefully something gets in the goal for them. And of course here in the 20th minute of play, we see Garrett Robinson get its first real opportunity taking 45 shots. That is most on MIT's roster. A free kick from the corner, or sorry, a corner kick. Played into the center box and this will go out of the opposite sideline. So a throw in for MIT. They quickly get it in. Played through the center and intercepted by Fitzsimmons to end the attack. But quickly intercepted and played to Robinson with a quick back pass into the penalty box looking for a shot. Tried to center and it hits a tree outside of Rochfield. We get a new ball. Almost a scary turnover from Fitz there. With MIT's aggressiveness and how many shots they put up, he's going to want to control the game when he has possession of the ball. He's going to want to take his time in the box and make sure that he finds an outlet before anything disastrous happens. So he's going to want to make sure he cleans that up a little as the game moves on. We're going to see Nathan Gunfit take another corner. Into the penalty box it goes. Headed in away from goal. Cleared by Emerson, and another opportunity to score for MIT. 
ends right there. And the ball hits the ref. He seems unfazed. A hand around the ref's shoulder. And a conversation that Fekins and the referee have ends there. A free kick for Fekins. Gotten along the side. Fekins has it again. Kapanesos to his right. Instead, he plays it to his left. And a quick one-touch pass back. And lobbed in, trying to get into the penalty box. Just a little bit too much on that one. Desai plays it over to the left. A pass back to Desai, and they will weigh their options. Simon had passed it up along the right side of the pitch, and now some sprinting and a quick interception. Emerson on the attack. Trying to center. A shot that goes just high of the net. Looked like it would be just about on goal. Maybe a foot too high. Desai couldn't quite reach it. And we see some subs, the first subs of the game. Good shot there. Um, this is definitely playing into Emerson's strategy. They forced a turnover from MIT, turned it into a counterattack, and got a good shot that just went over the bar. That's what they're going to want to continue to do the rest of the game and see if one sneaks sneaks Both past the side in the goal. For MIT, number 10, Will Siebel replaces number 18, Richter Brzezinski. And for Emerson, number 26, Evan Lee. Replaces number 10, Shane Biapro. And also for Emerson, number 28, Chris Molinos. Replaces number 6, Ben Deeming. We see Evan Lee come into the game, the freshman. And of course, Ben Deeming leaving. Deeming subbed for Biapro. And a young Emerson team. Generally, they start a lot of freshmen. Three starting this match, and now four in the match now. I think that definitely shows that the Emerson coaching staff has faith in their freshmen. They recruited them to come play here for a reason, and by starting them in such a high-stakes playoff game shows the faith that they have in their freshmen and that they want them to be the future of Emerson soccer and hopefully lead them to many more playoff appearances. Well put, and not just the future, but the now. Emerson plays along the left side, trying to get into the attacking area. Opportunity, but nothing much of it near the softball diamond. We will see a play, which appears to be a corner. Emerson's first corner kick of the day. Interested to see what the strategy is here. Hopefully they put some pressure on Desai and see if something can sneak past him and get an early goal on the board. Emerson ready to send it in. A lob on net. Desai plays it with his hands. And they are out of the penalty box for now. Debated by both sides, but it'll be an MIT throw-in. And a whistle. Just 25 minutes through the first half of this match. Nil-nil in the first playoff game in Emerson men's soccer history. MIT has it off the throw-in. They play it back to center in their back end. Along to the right side of the pitch for MIT. Attack developing, but the rest of the team not quite down yet, so Emerson's able to poke it away. MIT regains possession. Played through to the right side, and a through ball able to get by. Robinson has it. Played again through, nearing the penalty box. A lob that's going to miss wide, and Emerson will take control here. Cleared out, and a header failed. Instead, we see Stark Ragsdale with the ball. A through pass available. Off of an excellent defensive play by Gundvent. And a near opportunity on goal is thwarted. Emerson is definitely starting to put the pressure on MIT's defense. 
MIT's defense does average just under two goals a game allowed, and Emerson is definitely starting to put that pressure on, and hopefully they can find a leak in the back line and sneak something through. A nice throw in here, acting as a centering pass. Along the right side of the pitch for Emerson. Played to the back line, Kapanesos back there. Pass through and retreating is Emerson. MIT making some plays on the ball as well. No clear possession. And now there's clear possession because we will be seeing a free kick for MIT along the right side of the pitch. We go. A lob to the left side taken and Emerson has possession once more. A through ball for Cop. A through ball on the right side of the field that Emerson is able to handle. And a quick tackle will work well for MIT to regain possession. Momentum is definitely starting to brew here for the Lions. You can see they're getting more and more balls on the MIT side of the field. And I think eventually MIT's defense is going to get a little tired and maybe Emerson will find a mistake and something will happen for their offense. And one of those things we mentioned before the game was patience. And Emerson has known to be a patient squad. As right here, we get a whistle. A little bit of a dive there, but Emerson will take it. See what they do with this free kick. Opportunity to strike for the Lions coming up. Just over 17 minutes left in the first half of play. No score yet. Desai lined up on the far right side of the post. We'll see if they try to drag some players to the middle. Trying for a header. A through ball, a center on net, and a save by Desai. Whether that's a shot on goal or just wide. But Desai got it, and he'll boot it. And a clear and one of the best opportunities of the day for Emerson thwarted. Along the left side of the pitch, trying for an attack. MIT moving back and forth. One, two, touch, then a pass. Through the middle, Robinson nearly with an opportunity, trying to dribble his way out of danger. A centering pass for... Weiler, which goes off his head, a chance, and it goes high and wide. Yeah, we're definitely seeing that patience early on from Emerson there. That was their first shot of the game, near or on goal. It's hard to tell from up here, but definitely the patience that they were coming into the game with. They've waited, they've waited, they've waited for their opportunities, and they finally got a shot on goal with a good header and a good cross. And so and number 11, Thomas Chuaki into the game, replacing number 20, Gabe Rich. And so Jake Kelly kindly tells us that Gabe Rich is coming into the game. Skylar, Rags, Skylar Stark Ragsdale coming out, the graduate, in potentially what is his last game. MIT now with the ball. Arun Kirk, who had that opportunity right in front of the net, that just shot went wide. Robinson. Through the middle, a chance, a centering pass, but Kapanesos was there, and nobody for MIT was. So now Emerson on the right side of the pitch. A quick pass back into the middle. A lob, through ball intended, and it will find a member of Emerson. A chance in the middle, a shot, and a goal! And Emerson strikes first! It was all quiet, but now it's loud at Rochfield. That and it's Jorah exact. Del Banco's second goal of the season, and it might be the biggest of the season for Emerson. That was definitely what Emerson wanted coming into this game. They've waited all game for their opportunities. A mistake from MIT's defense, and they take advantage of it with a great shot finding the back of the net. And Emerson is one step closer to playing for a new MAC championship. And once again, I apologize. It was not Del Banco that scored. It was Thomas Chuaki, and that's his fifth goal of the season, which now leads Emerson. Five goals for him, and of course, maybe the biggest of the season, 1-0 Emerson with 15 to play here in the first half. 
Now for Emerson going forward here, obviously it's nice to get another goal, make it 2-0, put some more pressure on MIT, but their defense has been great the entire game, and they're going to want to continue that with the lead now and make sure that MIT does not get any opportunities as we close out the half with 15 minutes to play. And Hugh, and I know it's still only the first half, but do we see MIT push or press a little bit more now that they're trailing? I mean, I think they've definitely been pressing the whole game. We've seen that. They have lots of shots towards the area of the goal, and I think now it's going to become crunch time for them being down by one goal because goals are hard to come by with Emerson's defense, so they're going to want to try and force Emerson to make a mistake Emerson and push through that back line. In the 30th minute, also, a yellow card has been issued to MIT's number 19, Alex Wheeler. A centering pass on the free kick towards goal goes wide, and we will see Desai play this with some pace. Places it and quickly kicks it. And on the left side of the pace... Uh, sorry, the left side of the pitch. MIT begins and quickly turns it over. And here comes Emerson. A shot that will go wide and above the goal. So Desai once again gets to handle. And MIT hoping to get it out of their own end. Once again, we are seeing MIT's weakness on the pitch. Their defense, they've made two costly mistakes so far. One leading to a goal and one leading to almost a goal. And I think if they're going to want to have some success and stay in this game, they're going to have to clean up the defensive mistakes. And, of course, Alex Wheeler receiving a yellow card for MIT. So now one on both sides. Both squads now have to be careful as there is going to be a pass intercepted here and played nearly off of a head. Instead, MIT intercepts this pass, plays back, and Emerson playing a little bit more aggressive with the momentum, nearly getting another opportunity there. Yeah, I think now that they have the lead, they're definitely playing a little more aggressive, um, trying to get a second goal to maybe seal the game while still playing the defense that they've been playing the whole game. And I think their momentum is definitely going to swing and they're going to push more as we continue on in this game. And a near collision that looked like it could have been more intense as Kapanesos shakes his head. And Hewan, do you think that do you think that this aggression bodes well for Emerson? because we see, as we're about to see, a substitution here. Uh, I think the aggressiveness does bode well for Emerson. MIT has the aggressiveness. On the pitch for both teams. For MIT, number two, Jack Miner into the game, replacing number 24, James Simon. And for Emerson, number 21, Diego Jimenez into the game, replacing number 15, Joy Del Banco. We see some more subs. Jora Del Banco out. But definitely MIT's aggressiveness so far working against them. They have a lot of shots, but they're not really anywhere near the net, and they have made a lot of mistakes. So I think Emerson knows that they're making mistakes with their aggressiveness, and they're going to counterpunch with their own aggressiveness and find a way to try and get another goal on the board. We see MIT in attacking position. Trying to maintain a possession has been... An a difficulty all day. Trying to take a shot, but it's blocked. And another block, and quickly on the counterattack comes Emerson. A through pass, and beautifully done. Another through ball, but Chuaki was not seeing that. And so taken away now, MIT on the counterattack. They'll settle down. And they'll play it along the left side safely and slowly. A play made on the left sideline and a throw in for MIT quickly done. Off of a foot. Getting out of a sandwich and playing back into that left corner, trying to get a center on net. They do. But Fitzsimmons is able to make the catch. And again, opportunity taken away by the goalkeeper. Now Fitz is going to want to take his time here. Emerson has the lead. It's only the first half, so not trying to put that much pressure on, but he's just going to want to make sure he doesn't make any mistakes and force an easy goal for MIT. 
And a centering pass towards the middle of the pitch was briefly taken away. Chuaki falls down, wanting a call, but nothing there. Through to the center, MIT along the left center part of the pitch for them. Seems like a similar strategy where they look to get to the sides of the pitches and center into the middle of the box looking for a header. That's definitely what I've noticed too throughout the game. They they try and push the play of the, the play of the game on either side of the pitch looking for that header in the box and so far it hasn't been that successful for them. So maybe a coach's adjustment at the half is to maybe focus the play more into the middle of the game and the middle of the pitch and see what they can create out of those chances. Setup pass is made by Emerson to get them to this position. Back and forth. Excellent back pass. Now a chance for a through ball attack. Mounting for Emerson. A center into the penalty box and taken down without any anxious moments. Desai is able to play this along the left wing of the field. Through to the center, center and Emerson closes in quickly, which results in a back pass and then a center to the middle of the pitch and played back on the left side of the pitch now for Emerson. Back and forth, lob balls that are taken by opposite sides. Now MIT's chance at a lob through on the left side and it plays out. Caponeso's happy with his play. Stopping an opportunity for MIT, and now we will see a throw-in. MIT to throw in from the left side of the pitch for them. Gets it in deep. Kicked out by Emerson, and we will see them start this whole process over. They throw it into the penalty box. Little dribbling back and forth. Trying to play... Back inside, not quite a left side, strong side heavy attack so far on this possession for MIT. And the ball travels off out of the sideline. We see some subs again. And Adam Snowden will be coming into the game. Substitution for MIT, number nine, Adam Snowden into the game, replacing number eight, John Flynn. And so senior for senior, Snowden for Flynn, MIT on the attack, and immediately Snowden sees a touch. Deep on the left side, and once again, Hewen, we've seen this, I think on three straight touches for MIT, they've had the ball booted away and out into the corner, Emma and Emerson just comfortable playing that defensive role with a 1-0 lead. I mean, that was their game plan coming in, to play defense and try and get something into the net. They've done that, and they're up to the task so far. MIT's strategy has not changed. They're forcing everything into the corner and hoping to get into the box with a cross, and Emerson, so far, their defense has been up to the task, not letting MIT force any shots. And after an opportunity for MIT, we see Fitzsimmons right in front of the goal mouth, just inside his box, kicking to the left side, and Emerson gets play back underway. On the right side of the pitch, on Emerson's half, a play towards the left. A long dribble for Hugo Berville. And now a throw in once again for Emerson. And you wonder in positions like this, down 1 0, MIT again without Rami Bikdash, who is tied for their top scorer. And what does his absence in this match? really mean to you and the, their offense? I mean, they definitely look for him as he is tied for their top scorer. He's definitely someone they run their offense through and look to create shots. And his absence creates a hole in their offense. They have one less person to look to create shots. They have to rely on other people that might not necessarily have the, the shot tendency and strength that he leaves behind. So it's going to be interesting to see who they rely on to try and fill that hole and try and get a shot in the back of the net and tie this game up. And we just saw there who's been getting the volume in this match and a shot which will be on goal. 
on the ground, fairly strongly put, but taken by Fitzsimmons with ease. But like I was saying, we've seen Robinson taking a lot of that volume and shots. Every possession he's had has either been very quick and aggressive, well done, but just it seems like he hasn't had anywhere to pass the ball. I mean, like you said, Robinson is the second leading scorer. He's tied for the lead with the goal scored for the year for MIT. And he, him, he, they're leaning on him with the absence of their teammate, and they're leaning on him to be that guy. And he, he's had the opportunities, but without someone else to pass to and lean on, it's been hard for him to create those chances. Emerson sideline making some noise, and now we see a play into center. Robinson with possession. Plays it under the right side, just outside of the penalty box, and a shot wide, and a great save made by Fitzsimmons. The first real opportunity, first good shot on net, and Fitzsimmons stands tall. That's a fantastic save from Fitzsimmons. Uh, he's been up to the task so far tonight, as has his defense. He has not let anything face him, hasn't let MIT get anything close to a goal, and that was a great save, his first real opportunity of the game, and he stepped up in a big way. Robinson plays it on the right side of the pitch. Trying to get into that attacking position now. Could be an opportunity here. Through to the center, MIT with a shot and a score. And this match is tied, and it's 1-1. And we talk about how Emerson is just willing to play the defensive role in this match. And right there, we see MIT... They get a little bit more patient, and they get a good opportunity in deep right outside of the goalie box, and this match is all tied. I mean, I think that brings some fatigue from the Emerson defense. MIT has been peppering stuff in the box all half, and the defense has been up to the task so far, and I just think they're a little fatigued, and they allowed the back line to collapse. They allowed the back line to collapse a little bit and led to that goal. So Emerson's going to have to change their strategy a little bit and try and get that game-leading goal and see if they can seal it in the end of the first half or maybe the second half. Yeah, they can't just hunker down and play that park-the-bus style anymore. As the ball is played, looked like it was out of play from my view for a moment, but MIT still got possession. Falling over is Robinson. And so that goal scored by Aiden Holland, and it's his fifth goal, so he's now tied for the lead. And Hewan, he's a defender, but it, it goes to show you how they use every player, no matter what position to attack. It shows you just how aggressive they are. Obviously we've seen their defense hasn't been their strong suit. Their defense hasn't been their strong suit throughout the season and throughout this game so the fact that a defender has five goals shows you that they are very aggressive and they look to create shots anywhere on the field not just the people that are stereotypically supposed to score the goals so they definitely are a very aggressive team and I think now that the game is tied Emerson's going to have to adjust to that and see what they can do in the second half and now a point of note is that Caleb Blake has been subbed into the game for MIT for Garrett Robinson who's their leading shot taker so if MIT loses this match that will be his last match of the season and potentially their star player losing an impact late in this I mean, taking him out of the game creates a situation for MIT where they don't have their leading score, they don't have the guy that they look to, so they're going to have to figure out who that guy is going to be with him sitting on the bench and see if they can create something with someone else. Oh, Hewitt, we might have an opportunity late here. A shot blocked by Emerson. Good back line defense, able to clean that up. Emerson finally able to kick it out, but it looks like MIT with a slide pass. Excellent effort by MIT's midfield. Once a play off of a header and into a sea of white. A header and a whistle. Once again, we're seeing that strong Emerson defense counterattack from MIT. They're putting pressure on, and the defense stepped up to the challenge as we close out the first half here. 
With just over two minutes left in the first half of play, it is 1-1 in the first men's soccer playoff match in Emerson College history. Let's see if Fitz can make something happen here as the half winds down. The lob in just to clear for MIT. Emerson with possession. Content to play it slowly. So far now a lob through ball. Will decide win the race, of course. Emerson sideline upset about the high leg that Desai had on that kick. MIT moving it along their left sideline. A pass through to the middle, the triangle defense breaks that angle down and a pass back out trying to regroup. A passing play goes a little bit too hard off of a leg. Capanesos to throw this in for Emerson. Capanesos lobs this one. One minute remaining in the first half. Jake Kelly reminds us there's one minute left in the first half of play. 1-1 one, one so far in an exciting game here at Rochfield. We see now Aiden Ferguson handle and a lob in deep. That should shut down the first half here as MIT looks to just hold the ball for the last couple seconds of the half, not let Emerson get anything going and take us into halftime. Played through the center, MIT maybe one last late rush, one last attack. And smartly played out by Kapanesos. The MIT. clock will continue to roll down. MIT, MIT going as fast as possible. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that is the end of the first half. That is the end of the first half with your score tied. MIT one, Emerson one. Okay. And with the three seconds on the clock, we see an excellent shot just right into the center, which is what you're told to do. And we've seen that MIT, they're for real. They're willing to take these shots, and they're willing to get as aggressive as they need to be to score. What have you seen from both sides that has surprised you, what hasn't surprised you, and what are you expecting in the second half? I think we've definitely seen the teams that we thought we were gonna see today. MIT has been very aggressive, a lot of shots on goal. Emerson's defense has been very good, except for that one lapse where MIT put the ball in the goal. Emerson's offense has been very patient, waiting for that opportunity, for that mistake. They got that mistake and scored a goal of their own. So I think that will continue throughout the game. Surprisingly, um, Emerson's aggression, aggression early on, they've been aggressive. They've put more shots on than I was expecting coming in, and I think they'll look to continue that as the game goes on now that MIT has scored an equalizer. And, Hewan, what do you think that Emerson needs to do to keep the ball out of their deep part of the field that seems like their back line is having to do a lot of work and the goalkeeper although not every shot is on net Fitzsimmons has definitely been under more duress than they'd want I think knowing that MIT is going to be aggressive and not making mistakes in the middle part of the field when they have possession make sure their passes are crisp and to who they want it to go to and make sure that MIT doesn't have that many opportunities to create a counter attack where they can get past the, def the defensive back line and give Fitz a challenge between the sticks. Excellent. And so that leads me to the next question, which is how do you think that Emerson goes about a better attack in the second half? Because they did get one goal, but they haven't been in the offensive end as much as they've wanted to, which is a weakness of this squad, and it's definitely a strength of MIT to be constantly on attack. I think they just need to make sure that they start their counterattacks. Like, their defense has been very good, so when they, when they get the ball back and they stop MIT's attack, to just make sure that their outlet passes are strong and to, a, to an Emerson player to make sure that they can maybe create something in the middle of the field that leads to action in the box and maybe another goal. 
All right, thank you. And now we go to commercial break. We will see you for the start of the second half. 1-1 here at Rochfield through one half. Emerson Channel Sports will be right back.
All right, everyone, welcome back. 15 seconds to go until we're about to get ready to be underway here in the second half. It's Emerson College playoff soccer. It's the first playoff game in men's history, and it's shaping up to be a great finish. It's 1-1 here at half, about to be in the second half. What are some things to be looking for in the second half? Um, obviously for MIT, stay aggressive. Keep putting the shots on goal. Put pressure on Emerson's defense. See if you can sneak another one in there. For Emerson, keep staying stout on defense. Keep keeping MIT away from the goal and forcing the um, to play the offense. Um, and for the Emerson's offense to just keep push being aggressive and trying to sneak a goal in there. And perhaps we'll see some more of Gregory Campanesos in the offensive zones. He's been great in passing the ball to and from, but we need to see more of him. Would you say that we need to see more of him to see Emerson score some more goals in the second half? Definitely we do. He scored a goal against MIT in their last contest, so I think for him he's going to want to try and get back to that score, another goal against the same team, and they need to rely on him to get the offense going while keeping their defense how it's been playing the whole game. The referee will now move to the circle, and we will see a kickoff for Emerson. It appears that it is going to be kicked off by Skylar Stark-Ragsdale. The second half of the biggest game in Emerson College men's soccer history is back underway. It's Ben Deeming lobbing it deep to the right side and playing off ahead. MIT knifes it away. This is Dumitrescu unable to handle it in the corner, and so a throw-in for Emerson. Emerson definitely starting off aggressive. I'm sure that's what they talked about in the locker room at the half, and I'm thinking they're going to want to continue that throughout the half and see if they can make something happen. A, th a hard throw in, and an opportunity goes off to the left side. It's Evan Lee with it. Lee dodging three defenders and playing it back to Kapanesos. Centering pass into the box, looking for Bo Feekins. Thwarted by MIT, it's Weiler. And then again, Lee. Off of a leg. Chasing after that was Adam Snowden. Snowden. On the attack for MIT. Passes it off. Opportunity for Robinson. Back in the game here in the second half. And now quickly a counterattack. Here comes Emerson. Even rush. An attack here. And booted away at the last moment by Jack Miner. But Jora Del Banco had a very nice looking opportunity, but no shot. This is exactly what Emerson wanted to do coming out of the half. Be aggressive against MIT's aggression. Force their defense to make mistakes. They've done that so far. They've earned themselves a corner kick not even two minutes into the half. And let's see if they can make something happen. And they're hitting MIT with a little bit of their own medicine, would you say? Absolutely. Batted off the hand. This ball is still loose. A chance there taken by Deeming. But nothing I doing. I think they've caught MIT on the back foot a little bit here. Coming out aggressive, forcing the defense to make some plays early. And I think they're going to continue that the rest of the half. And we have to see how MIT adjusts to the halftime game plan. Deep lob caught Emerson flat-footed momentarily. Fitzsimmons plays this. Kind of a weak lob. This is played over here now by Seipel. Back to Seipel. On the middle, that's Flynn. Now quickly knifed away, holding of the jersey, no call there. Fitz has to be a little better there. He should have let the ball travel into the box and picked it up. He tried to force a kick out of the box. The ball bounced up on him, and it 
turn into a weak kick back to MIT. He's going to have to focus on limiting mistakes throughout the rest of the game, make sure MIT can't take advantage. Excellent clear by Emerson. MIT now starting their rush again. That's Snowden. Now back to Snowden. Played by Gunfent back to Snowden, and now it's Minor. To the right side, we now see Gross. And it goes out of play. Throw in taken by Minor. Excellent pass to the middle. Robinson tried for a through ball, but not strong enough. Good vent. Long Excellent no. spacing from MIT here early on. In the first half, they did not have a lot of spacing. They were pretty bunched in the corner, and in the second half, they've come out with a lot more spacing against Emerson's defense. Definitely a change that we are seeing early in this second half as we see the throw in for MIT looking for an attack. Seipel had it, and the ball goes well wide over and beyond Fitzsimmons now to throw. He'll decide for a little free kick instead. Mallet up the right side. Through to the middle, this is Deeming. Along to Evan Lee. Evan Lee with some pace. Tried to play it along the left side, intercepted by Robinson. Lee to the middle. A chance for Emerson. And handled with ease by Desai. Pass off to Hendrick Meyer. Hendrick Meyer plays it into trouble. Emerson on the counterattack. Rich tried to play it, and now he'll have a throw in instead. I think Emerson's going to want to try and control the game here in the second half, make MIT play their game, force MIT to make mistakes, and b use the patience that they had in the first half and try and get a ball in the back of the net off of an MIT mistake. Throw in by Rich, taken by Bo, and that is shot wide, deep by Deeming, who is clearly upset with the call. There's the aggression we're seeing from Emerson early. Shot from way outside the box. Nowhere near the goal, but nonetheless a shot. Emerson being very aggressive here in the second half. Something that we were not expecting coming into the game. And something to note there is the using their defense to get up into the attack. And now MIT on the counter. Gunvent. Played over. Weiler. Unable to get a clean pass away. It's now Snowden who's able to get this back to Weiler. MIT struggling to get it into an attacking position. Stout defense. Stout defense played by Emerson. Quickly a takeaway. Ferguson able to play it to the left side of the pitch. Rich with a center. <laughs> And an opportunity that just goes wide. Maybe not even a touch, but an excellent pass. And if we see more of that from Emerson, surely a goal. Emerson is definitely playing to their game plan early on here in the second half. They're, not, they're being aggressive, but not overly aggressive. They're waiting for MIT's mistakes. They just got one there. Beautiful cross into the box. Unfortunately, could not make anything out of it. But this is exactly what they wanted to do coming out of the half. And it looks like they're going to continue this as the game moves forward. Deeming had made a nice pass, but it eventually was intercepted by MIT. Will Seipel's pass is intercepted the other way, and now here comes Del Banco with some pace, trying to deke by a defender. And, of course, the referee now has no chance but to step in. MIT catches a little break there with that foul. Emerson was on the counterattack, looking to make a move, so the foul stops play for now. Aiden Ferguson speaking with the referee briefly and about to take a free kick. Wesley Jackson runs to the far left side. Ferguson takes the boot. A chance in some traffic, but 
cleared out by MIT Kapanesos with an excellent header. Headers back and forth here. It's Ferguson to Del Banco. Del Banco off a body and kept in by MIT. Wesley Jackson unable to make the play, trying to go on the counterattack. It's Robinson with some pace, played on the right side of the pitch and taken away by Lee. Back and forth here in the past couple minutes at the 36 minute mark in the half. Still 1-1. This is Mallet. Emerson's defense definitely starting the second half how they played most of the first, being very stout, not letting MIT getting many chances, and that's what they're going to want to do if they want to have success the rest of this game. And Hewen, the offense has been much more aggressive, as you've noted. A big change in this half, and do you think so go do you think a goal will come if they continue to get these opportunities that they're getting so far? I think they will. They know MIT's defense is not their strong suit. They've been very aggressive with them. In the, in the second half, they've caught them on their back foot, and I think they'll find a mistake and get There's in. a counterattack. Center by Aiden Ferguson goes out of play. MIT's defense up to the task so far, but I think the more aggressive that they are, their defense is going to get tired and they're going to find a mistake like they did in the first half, and I think they're going to take advantage of it and find the back of the net. It's just a matter of when that comes. Rich with a heavy throw in into the box and snatched out of the air by Desai. An excellent play by the keeper. It's great goalkeeping there. Kept his cool. Wasn't, wasn't worried about the pressure from Emerson. Kept his cool. Good save. Play continues for MIT. And as of right now, Desai is playing one of his better matches. Out of, out of the ten matches he's started, he's allowed two goals and eight or more. This so far is not one of those. That's what he's going to want to do the rest of the game. Be a good goalkeeper between the sticks. Not let Emerson get any chances or else it's going to be a tough day for MIT. And it looks like we're getting an offside call deep. Gabe Rich seemed to be a little bit too far behind the form of MIT. And now we'll see some substitutions. Coming in, we see Aiden Hallinan. And now we see Hallinan was already in the match, but we're now seeing Richard Broseski come into the match. MIT with the ball in center here. Played by Snowden. Dribbled all the way to Gunfent. A back pass now. That went off to Dumitrescu. MIT content to play back line passes. Now up to Snowden trying for an attack. To the right side of the pitch, it's Hallinan. Hallinan with a center. But that center was not center. It went behind the net. And so we will see Emerson possession, Fitzsimmons to handle. MIT is definitely still being aggressive here in the second half. Still getting those shots in the area of the goal, putting pressure on the defense. And so far, the Lions defense has been up to the task. And we'll see what happens as the game goes on. We see Ferguson make a deep lob which is played by Goodfent in the corner. Along for a Hendrik Meyer. A back pass into danger, and now to Snowden. It's Weiler, back pass to Weiler, trying to get out of traffic. Four Emerson defenders right with him. Through the middle, they find Snowden. And back to Goodfent. Takes it slowly, but now quickly passes it off. Switching his pace up, trying to find a spot in the defense to attack a long shot that won't reach the net, but a shot nonetheless. Fitzsimmons to take a free kick. He will pass it to his right, finding Bo Feekins, who passes it off to Ferguson. Ferguson to Lee. Evan receiving calls down the left sideline. He finds Del Banco. 
in on the attack. Playing a little volleys with his legs. A fall down by both, and the referee makes the call in favor of MIT. The chippiness we saw at the beginning of the game kind of wavered towards the end of the first half. The chippiness that we saw at the beginning of the first half kind of kind of wavered a little bit as the half came to a close. We're seeing it more at the beginning of the second half here, and we'll see if that continues moving forward. Off of Weiler's head. Meyer plays it to the left side to Snowden. Along the right side, we see Aiden Hallinan with five goals on the season one tonight. To the middle, it's Snowden. Played through, and Emerson able to get in front of that pass. And some clapping as good defensive work done again to thwart another opportunity for MIT. MIT is definitely having their opportunities. They're finding space in the box. But as we saw in the first half, Emerson's defense has been up to the test so far. And hopefully they can keep that going for another 30 minutes and maybe sneak a goal in on the other side. And once again... Substitution for Emerson, number 10, Shane Biafro, back into the game, replacing number 8, Skyler Stark Ragsdale. And once again, we see Skylar Stark, Ragsdale come out, and Biathro is back in the match for Emerson. MIT plays this along their back line. We see Jack Miner with it as he dribbles through, and it's blocked. Well played by Emerson, but a pass. Just passed Gabe Rich as he was making the excellent defensive play. Now Desai handles this from his keeper position for MIT. This is Dumitrescu. A pass back, alongside back to Miner. To the right side to Hallinan. Hallinan. Through to Dumitrescu. Dumitrescu passes it along, finding John Flynn. John Flynn with some fancy moves. And he will be content to play this back. I think MIT is going to want to lean on Hallen in a little bit here in the second half, especially with Robinson being on the bench at the moment. Hallen in scored their only goal of the game. He's their he's their leading goal scorer, tied with Robinson. So I think they're going to want to rely on him as the game moves forward and see what chances they can create around him. Hallen in definitely to be a player to watch in this one, as we saw. Seipel making an incredible rush towards goal with five defenders all over him. Eventually, he shot it wide. And now we see a corner for MIT. It's going to be Gunvent. Gunvent to kick this in from the corner. Close to him is Brzezewski. The corner does not work out well for MIT. It goes out of play, and they will call yet another corner as this appears to have gone off an Emerson defender. Appears that that went off of... I'm not too sure. Looks like it might have gone off Del Banco, but now another corner here. Continual chipping, chippiness that we saw in the first half continues on here between the ref and the Emerson defenders as well as some of the MIT players. The corner is in. Handled by Emerson. And a lob to Fitzsimmons. So opportunity thwarted once again. MIT not able to score and not even not even able to get a shot on goal there. I think that was the tale of the first half. Um, MIT took a lot of shots, but nothing really competitive. Fitzsimmons only really had to make one good save. Um, so I think for MIT to have success here in the second half, they're going to want to find some more quality shots and force Fitzsimmons to make some amazing saves and maybe sneak one past him. Ferguson 
Plays this along the right side up to Feekins. Feekins playing it through. Can't quite see to who. Knifed away by MIT. Seipel plays this back to Hendrick Meyer. Meyer to Aiden Hollinen. Hollinen. Del Banco sticks with it and forces a bad pass. Back and forth action here on the right side of the pitch. It's Nathan, or Richter Brzezinski rather. Now it's over Snowden. Centering to the left side. Gunfent trying to get by and an Emerson player falls down. And with that, we will see Emerson take over possession. Gunfent a little too antsy on that possession. We see Ferguson play this over to Mallet. To the left side, he finds Wesley. Wesley Jackson passes it up. Looking for Gabe Rich. Freshman midfielder made a nice play in deep. And Emerson trying to regain possession now. And they do. And quickly they turn it back over. Hallinan trying to find open space. Hendrick Meyer unable to make a play. And Wesley Jackson... Speaking with the referee here. Some conflict along the sidelines. Coaches of both team unhappy. Jackson slightly nicked up, readjusting his socks. MIT complaining there that Jackson was quick to get up after his injury, wondering if it was a real injury or just trying to get the possession back in the Lions' hands. Interesting tactic we see here. Almost halfway through this second half, still at a deadlock. 1-1 one, one. goals by Hallinan and Chuaki, and now we see... A call by the referee. There's a subs call and what it may have been offsides. And now we see a sub for Emerson. Chris Molinos is coming in for Ben Deeming. A little animosity from the Emerson bench. Ref was not acknowledging their substitute. He does now. All is good, but the Emerson bench is a little riled up. Substitutions on the pitch for both teams. And now we also see a substitute. Dumitrescu. IT, number 24, James Simon back into the game. James Simon comes back into the game for Andre Dumitrescu, replacing him in his defensive position. Gunfent a throw-in. Number 31, Andre Dumitrescu. Hallinan through center, intercepted by Emerson, and quickly on the rush, MIT gets it right off of one foot of an Emerson player. Weiler plays this to the right side. We now see John Flynn pass it back. Flynn gets this over to Brzezinski. Hallinan finds Snowden. Brzezinski steps in. Hallinan again, trying to loop it towards the goalkeeper. He does, but Fitzsimmons is able to corral that one. MIT continuing to pepper the goal, forcing Emerson's defense to make plays. Emerson is up to the challenge so far. We'll see what happens throughout the rest of the game with MIT's aggression. Wesley Jackson forward. made an excellent pass up to Jora Del Banco, but nothing doing on that rush. Slowing things down, and we see a whistle and an unfortunate sight on the pitch right now. We see that Aiden Ferguson, the senior defender, is down. The referee there, a leg straight up in the air. 
and we hope for everyone's sake, and especially for him, that he's okay. It seems like he is. Speaking with his manager, Ferguson, walking without a need to limp. And it looks like everyone is okay as he grabs at that left calf. I didn't see what had happened there, but certainly looked like he was in some pain. Clearly, again, a possibility that it was for the stakes of this match. I think we've seen that so far early on in the second half. We didn't see it much in the first half. The amount of players going down and the contact between players, it's definitely getting to be crunch time with the, the game tied and the circumstances on the line. So I think we're going to continue to see that players going at each other and maybe faking injuries to try and slow the game down. I think that's going to continue throughout the rest of the game. Any edge you can get to win as MIT looks for an attack. It's Weiler, and it's knifed away by Emerson. Good defense, good form, and Del Banco plays this along, looking for his teammate, but unable to find him as Hallinan has this now for MIT, playing it on to Weiler. A back pass for Snowden, and an excellent play just in the nick of time made by Cade Mallett, the freshman playing in high leverage spots late in this match and another excellent play defensively for Emerson and for Mallet. Entrance goes to Weiler. This pass for Hendrik Meyer as he plays it back now. And we see another pass here for MIT. Hallinan on the right side of the pitch where he plays so frequently on the attack. It's Snowden trying to get in deep and save it. It seems like he has, and he has, but at what cost as he turns it over? But Wesley turns it right back over. MIT has it again. A pass over, and Hallinan is in his spot. It's that right corner. He loves to pass it from there, and it's quickly intercepted, played out, and we will see another stoppage good defense from the Lions yet again. We talked about this in the pregame. The freshmen that Emerson have, a lot of freshmen in the starting lineup, and I think the freshman defenders in Jackson and O'Malley have stepped up in a big way in this game, not allowing MIT to get pressure on the goal, and they've made some good stops with their heads and their legs, and I think that that's going to continue throughout the rest of the game, and they're going to be an important part of Emerson's game plan to win the game. A corner here and a loose ball. A drive on the left leg there by Brasevsky, but nothing doing. High octane action here, and we will see a stoppage again. But I think to your point, Hewan, they have they have definitely been playing very well in that facet. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how that continues and how it changes for the rest of this match now that we've got just 20 minutes left in regulation time. Another good job from Emerson there on the stressful situation in the box with the ball rolling around. They handled it well, and let's see what they can do on offense. Excellent center. It is onside for the freshman Rich. He gets by, centering in front, and a shot on goal that's just turned away. Desai with excellent goalkeeping and maybe the best attack of the day that hasn't turned into a goal for Emerson. All made possible by Gabe Rich and excellent positioning by the forwards. That was a fantastic offensive possession. Great pass. Great pass into the box. Great shot. Desai, great on the, on the goal. That's the first real shot that he's had to challenge all game. He did a great job of pushing it away for a corner kick. Emerson's going to want to continue Multiple that throughout the game. For Emerson. Number six, Ben Deeming, back into the game. And now we're seeing... Replacing number 15, Jordan Del Banco. We're now seeing a mass substitution for Emerson. Replacing number 20, Gabe Rich. And some antics in the goal area as one of the Emerson players are down, but we just see Ben Deeming come back into the game for Emerson alongside Skylar Stark Ragsdale and Thomas Chuaki. Currently down on the ground is... Either Campanesos or Fikens, I can't quite tell. It is a 20, and it is Fikens. Fikens was down speaking to the referee now. Like I mentioned earlier, we're seeing a lot of bodies on the turf here in the second half, and I think that's going to continue mind games being played by both sides here. A centering pass on the corner. 
An opportunity thwarted for now. And once again, we see another substitution for Emerson. Evan Lee coming out. And now the corner. Played off of a leg. And a shot that goes way wide by Chris Molinos just subbed in. Another chance. And what an exceptional play made by Desai, who is not happy. And he'll throw down to the ground with a shoulder. Bo Feekins goes down and Desai unable to contain his anger. Feekins was in front of him and didn't know he was there. Desai shoved him down to the ground, conferring with referees and players. Feekins appears to be in excruciating pain. And we will see what comes of this. The chippiness is at an all-time high here, Evan. We know the circumstances. We know the stakes. Winner moves on to the new MAC championship. Obviously, tie game late in the half. Tempers are flaring. Desai, great save on the end. Not happy with the presence from Feekins, and he throws him to the ground, and we'll see what the ref does here with actions. And like you said, Hewan, chippiness at an all-time high. Everybody doing whatever it takes to win anything they can do for even a slight advantage in this deadlocked game at one. Just less than 19 minutes left in regulation, second half here at Rochfield. And yes, like you said, a chance to play in the championship. The emotions come in, and I believe right here we are seeing some penalties assessed to MIT as Emerson's team very, very happy with the ruling. The rare card shown to the goalkeeper here. Not something you see every day. And I believe from the refs here. I believe for the third time this season we are going to see a penalty kick for Emerson. Kaponesos is the only player who's taken penalties for Emerson this season. He's taken two, he's converted on two. Will he take this one here? And if so, will he be three of three or two of three? This is a great turn of events for Emerson here. Desai, Desai made a great save on Emerson's last attack, took away that save by forcing the penalty, and we'll see if Emerson can take advantage. With 19-15 left, this could be the biggest moment of both of these teams' seasons. Gregory Kapanesos, the midfielder and leader of Emerson, could have a chance with one kick to send Emerson to the final. A shot, and he scores! And Gregory Kapanesos has scored the goal. It's 2-1. to one. Emerson leads a celebration near the fans. The whole team with him. Everybody but Fitzsimmons, and even he is clapping. This could be it for MIT, and this could be a chance for the championship dreams of Emerson. Gregory Kapanesos scores his fifth goal of the season and perhaps the biggest goal in Emerson men's soccer history. What a shot from Campanesos there. Cool, collected, calm, knew the circumstances, knew the stakes, took the shot, decide guess strong, hit the back of the net, top left corner. That was the biggest shot of his life, and we'll see if the Emerson defense can hold on and take them to the championship. It's going to be Weiler to kick this off for MIT with extra urgency. We talk about how fast MIT likes to play, but right now... MIT needs to play faster than ever with more urgency than ever this season. Emerson with a 2-1 lead with just 19 minutes to play in the second half. The lead given by, of course, their leader in scoring, Gregory Kapanesos, the sophomore. He's 3-for-3 three three on penalty kicks this season. Those are the only three penalties that Emerson has taken all season. And he converts in possibly the most dream fashion, a penalty kick after an undisciplined play by Desai, after an excellent save he had made. And Gregory Kapanesos, his name may go down in Emerson history, especially with the biggest goal in school history so far potentially the last 19 minutes of MIT's season. On the line right here as Snowden plays it along. Weiler unable to get to that ball, and Emerson now on the counterattack, mounting a rush quickly 
played down and away by John Flynn, and now it's on Snowden's legs. Snowden gets it through the middle, and a good play made by Cade Mallon to clear this. Emerson with a chance, but actually, no, they really didn't. The ball looked closer to Chucky than it was. And MIT has possession now quickly intercepted. This is Aiden Ferguson. Ferguson plays it through. Emerson with a chance. It's Chuaki. Chuaki looking for a center or a shot. He centers, and it's intercepted, played back, and centered out. Cleared by MIT, and that is not where they need the ball to be right now if they want a chance to play in extra time or in the championship game. Emerson leads with 18 minutes left in the second half. A 2-1 to -one match. The deciding goal so far scored by Gregory Kapanesos, the sophomore, on a penalty kick, his third of the season. As a play on the left side of the field, Guntvet will get another throw in, and he gets it in to a teammate, lobbed back, and now... They have to play patiently but alertly. A good opportunity must be had by MIT in order to get this all even and to continue their season. Emerson takes the ball away, trying to crush the will and the hopes of MIT here late. Able to get the ball back. MIT in open field, a through pass, in through all the way to Brzezinski, and we see a play in the corner. Over into the middle, we find the ball. Reaching Adam Snowden again. Snowden has an open look. He takes it, and it's saved by Fitzsimmons. And in one of the better opportunities in the second half and the game, Fitzsimmons able to make a big-time stop. And again, we see another player down on the Emerson side of things. Mallet and Deeming over to help. The crowd is definitely getting it in, getting into it here at the playground. We can feel the energy from the Emerson students. You can tell that they are definitely on the side of their team and willing the Emerson Lions to victory here with just over 15 minutes left with a chance to play f in the championship. And so we see Evan Lee going out to help Cade Mallet in assisting their teammate. Ben Deeming coming off the field, and he does have a limp, so this one... Hopefully he is okay. We never like to see anybody get injured in sports or anywhere. Deeming walking now with the trainers off the field. Limping, hopefully all right. Fitzsimmons will get us back underway here. With 16.40 left in the second half, Emerson leads 2-1. to one. Off of a head, Chuaki able to find Deeming as... Ferguson was actually the player that left the field, 16 not 6 So Aiden Ferguson now on the sideline being looked at by trainers as this is played by MIT. With some urgency now, more urgency than ever for a team that takes among the most shots in the NUMAC, second in the NUMAC. An excellent play by Evan Lee to avoid attacking players and get it cleared into MIT's end. A whistle... And an MIT free kick. They go quickly, trying to catch Emerson's form off guard. It's Snowden. Snowden passes it over, and now they get it on to Hallinan. Hallinan plays it back, and they have to play with some more urgency here as late in this match, they need shots on goal and in the attacking end. We'll see if anybody takes further charge in that department for MIT. Throw in and a look that will be weathered by Emerson as Hallinan with some pace into the corner, cut off by Wesley. Jackson's pass now taken by Jack Miner as he lobs a pass onto the left side of the pitch, looking to develop an attack. Will Seipel. Sends the ball into the right corner, and this one will go past the end line. And it will be Fitzsimmons' ball to play. 15 minutes left in the game here. Emerson's game plan should just be play defense. Don't let MIT get any chances. Don't make any mistakes. Hold on to that lead as the clock winds down and book their ticket to that new MAC championship. And Hewan. We talk about 
late in this game how the nerves are ever so present early in the game, and they'll be there the whole time, like you said. Is there something to say for keeping your emotions in check late in a game like Desai was unable to do, which resulted in the penalty kick that may have ended his team's season? I think Emerson has to see that. They have to see what Desai did. They have to know that they have to keep their emotions in check. Don't let MIT get any chances like a penalty kick. Know that they have the lead with very little time left on the clock. Just make sure they keep their cool. Don't get don't get too animated and just stay how they have been the whole game and they should be okay. Not let MIT get any of those chances. Play discipline sounds like a plan for Emerson. Meanwhile, for MIT, they are on the counterattack looking for a last moment goal to save their season. John Flynn. Passes it through to the middle. It's Will Seipel. Seipel with a look. Had a chance to shoot. Instead, he looks to pass. And Evan Lee, the freshman, is able to play this out. Thomas Chuaki was on the attack for Emerson, but it was played down by Jack Miner. Along the right side, now played into the middle. We find Hendrick Meyer passing it over to Snowden, getting it through, finding his teammate, John Flynn. Now back to Brzezewski. Seipel unable to make anything happen there. And we see Ben Deeming hand the ball off here to Fitzsimmons and some subs. We see Dimitrescu come back in for MIT. We see Jora Del Banco come in for Emerson and exiting the match for now is Chris Molinos and Thomas Chuaki. Bo Feekins tries to center to his teammates upfield and unsuccessfully does, but with the work of his teammates, they get possession. We now see in the game again is the ever pacey quick Garrett Robinson. MIT's leader in shots trying to get them into a draw. I think with Robinson back on the field here for the engineers, they're going to want to lean on him, create opportunities through him as they're doing right now, and see if they can get that equalizing goal and send this game into extra time. Yes, and of course, I apologize. No draws here. It'd just be tied until extra time. But right now, it's 2-1 to one with 11 and 30 to go. In the second half, Emerson given the lead by Gregory Kapanesos on a penalty kick after an undisciplined moment by the goalkeeper Desai. Kapanesos is third. He's three for three this season, and with that penalty kick, he may have scored the biggest goal in program history. We now see Emerson playing safely in their own end. Fitzsimmons has to get it away with some speed, and he does. Could have been dangerous. Fitz has to be careful here, not make... Fitz has to be careful here, not make any mistakes. Make sure that his his passes and his kicks are accurate to who he wants it to go to and not let MIT get any chances to pepper shots onto the goal. Hallinan able to play this off to his teammate Meyer. Meyer looked for Seipel, but it was taken away, and now it's a through pass. Del Banco is in, but the pass was a little bit too hard for him to handle. Del Banco with a move around trying to swipe that slanted edge, looking for any play here. Dribbles himself into submission, able to keep it in though, but Hallinan, the experienced defender, able to play this away for MIT. MIT, with 10 minutes to play in regulation, has to go fast here, and they will go with a sub. It's so, interesting to see Emerson being aggressive here. They have the lead, time is ticking down, there's only 10 minutes left. I. I can see them trying to get that goal to really seal the game, but they should still be aware to be stout on defense and not let MIT get any chances. We, still, we see Will Siepel come out of the game for Caleb Blake late for MIT, and now Emerson trying to push a late counterattack. An MIT player has fallen down, and Emerson trying to weave through this defense and... 
unable to do so at least for now. An intercepted pass by Emerson, played off into the left corner. And a play by MIT out. They will call it MIT ball for now. We see Jack Miner dropping that off. Hallinan to play this in on the throw. We are under 10 minutes left in the second half of play. Emerson leads 2-1, to one, courtesy of Gregory Kapanesos' penalty kick, his third of the season. He's 3-for-3. Three three. Dumitrescu to Goodvent. Robinson. This is the guy you want with the ball late in the game but not in the position where you want him to have it. Dumitrescu. Tripped up and we get a whistle. And a yellow card it looks like. Arguing on the sideline. And because that is deeming second card of the match, he gets a red card and is no longer eligible to play in this one. And a break now for MIT. MIT needs to take advantage here. Emerson down a man. MIT has the advantage with players on the field. They need to take advantage, put shots on goal, make fits work, and see if they can get an equalizer here late in the second half. Dumitrescu to kick it, and he does. In the penalty box, on Gunfett's foot, a shot, and easily taken without taking a step. Fitzsimmons saves it, and the score remains 2-1. Eight minutes and 20 seconds remain in the second half, and it looked like for a moment that Robinson would have a chance at the ball, but of course not. Fitzsimmons able to play it away. And now MIT has to go on the attack. Even though they're down and there's only eight minutes left, MIT needs to be patient, find that shot that they can get past Fitz and tie this game up. They can't just throw shots out there and let Emerson get the ball back. They have to be patient and find the right shot to tie this game up late. Well said. Cade Mallet upset, able to play it out, but... A throw in for MIT. Brasevsky throws it in. This is Robinson. In some traffic. Cleared out. This is Jack Miner near the center line. Miner will take a boot. And an easy save this time for Fitzsimmons. That is not a shot that MIT wants to take. Like I said, they need to be patient. They can't be taking shots from that far out of the box. They need to find their shots close to the goal and force Fitz to make a mistake and get past the defense and try and get this game tied with seven minutes to go. Hallinan. Through pass for Robinson. It works out so far. Looking for a chance and a good play by Mallet, who's done that all day, clearing it out and halting any potential opportunity that MIT wants to have. We see another sub now. It's going to be... Substitution for MIT, number 23, Caleb Asfaw into the game. Caleb Asfaw into the game now as we see this shot. It looks like Hendrick Mayer replaced by Asfaw here late with just over five minutes to play. Six minutes and 20 seconds left. We see Fitzsimmons taking this kick after the ball passed over the end line on the MIT attack. Emerson needs to be careful here. Their defense is getting a little too cute with balls against MIT. They're trying to dribble it out of space. They just need to clear the ball down the field, let MIT reset. They don't want to get too cute, make a mistake, and have MIT tie this game up. We'll see how Emerson plays to what you said right there as this ball is played into the center of the field and now taken by Brasevsky. Passed into the middle, Robinson shot one and it just went wide. No challenge there that time for the keeper. I mean, that's what, M that's what MIT wants to do. They want to play through Robinson. He's their leading scorer. They need to play through him. They did that. He found a shot. He maybe needs to find a better shot, but that's what MIT wants to do. 
as th we have six minutes left in the game, they're going to try and want to go through Robinson and see if they can get a late equalizer here. Fitzsimmons able to lob this one into the middle of the field where the ball will find its way to MIT's backline defense. Hallinan now has it. He plays it through the center, finding his teammate Simon. It's Simon with a premature kick, but he's able to maintain possession. He'll play this over to John Flynn. Moving along the left wing, Flynn. Tried to pass it through to Asfa. And it looks like we're going to be seeing a yellow card here, which I'm thinking has to go to Evan Lee there. They might have called a for him accidentally kicking him on that play. So a free kick here. Emerson, about, go Emerson ahead. needs to be careful here with these penalties. They can't let MIT get anything too close to the goal with time winding down. They need to be careful, not be overly aggressive, and have MIT get a free kick just like this or even a penalty. They need to be careful. And what do you think we're going to see the strategy is on this free kick? Looking for a header in the penalty box? I think they're going to want to look for a head. Everyone is in the box as of right now. They're going to want to look for someone tall, have a good placement ball, and hopefully find a head that sneaks past Fitz for an equalizer. Perhaps they look for James Simon here, the tallest player within the penalty box right now. For MIT, we see the ref making his run out. We also see that in prime position, if they so choose to pass. They do have Hallen in an excellent position right in the middle of the field. They look for a header. The ball is loose and this game is tied. And a fight, a fight in the net mouth. Fitzsimmons upset. Incredibly, this match is tied a perfectly executed corner and because of all the scrum at the net mouth I don't know who scored the goal right now they go with a they go with a quick huddle on the sideline and and Hewen you talk about going for the header trying to find the tallest man and you talked about trying to get it in deep being patient and trying to make Fitzsimmons make a mistake they did just that and this game is all tied up I mean that's exactly what they wanted to do they they got the ball into the box on the free kick they forced they forced the rumbling around forced Fitz to move finding out where the ball is they found a hole put it in the back of the net that's exactly what they wanted to do and now we'll see what Emerson does here with five minutes left in a tie game an MIT goal scored by number 14, Garrett Robinson, in the 91st minute. And in the 91st minute, we see a goal scored by Garrett Robinson, their leading shot taker, and now their leading goal scorer. He's got correction six goals on the season. The and we get the correction from our PA, Jake Kelly, the 86th minute, not the 91st. Four minutes and 44 seconds left to play in this half. We are set to have an excellent finish here at Rochfield. 2-2. 2 4.33 left. MIT, it seemed like their hopes were waning, but they got exactly what they needed and exactly what they wanted. They were able to tie this. And, Hewan, where do you see this game going? I mean, there's only four minutes left. The defenses have been playing pretty well up to this point. I think Emerson could make one last gasp at a game-winning goal in the closing minutes of the game if they just keep pushing, keep being aggressive. Their defense is up at the middle part of the field now, so it looks like they're trying to be more aggressive. If they can find a hole and catch MIT's defense on the back foot, they should have a chance at a game-winning goal here. We see the fans erupt in cheers. Emerson awarded the ball here. 
in MIT territory, Desai and MIT communicating with each other, trying to prevent any final opportunities here for Emerson to win the match late and to prevent extra time. I think they're going to want to have the same strategy, find ahead, cause confusion, and see if they can poke a ball in and win this game. Looking for confusion deep in... In the penalty box, ball straight up in the air. Robinson battling with Wesley, and Wesley able to win the head. But as fall, excellent play. And if if Biathro was not there, we might have seen an excellent opportunity for MIT. And now we see a player down. It is as fall who is down, helped by Robinson and Siepel. He's back up and running. So he is okay, thank goodness. Hallinan will have the free kick handed off to Jack Miner. We continue to see the mind games play, being played here by both sides, letting the clock wind down, trying to force it to extra time and give MIT the possession back. Here's Meyer. Meyer gets it to Robinson and his shot hooked right instead of left and it goes wide. MIT is playing to their strategy, playing off of Robinson, letting him create his own shots, and the Emerson defense has to be careful with that. They're kind of leaking on the back line a little bit as time winds down. I know they're tired. They just got to fight for two more minutes and keep MIT out of the box and see if they can force something on the other end. Certainly a safe strategy for sure, as now we will see this play through. It is going wide of every MIT player. Another pass. That is going to find its way to Evan Lee. MIT able to get it off of Lee's stumble. A shot deep just out of the penalty box by about 10 yards. And we see a shot by Siepel go wide. Fitzsimmons handles the ball. Once more, a free kick coming up. MIT is definitely pressing here a little bit, trying to get that game-winning goal with a minute and a half to play. Emerson's defense is on its back foot a little bit. They just have to hold tight for a minute and a half more and force this game to go into extra time. They can't get complacent and let MIT get something in the back of the net as time winds down. This ball played out to the right side. Some arguments along... That sideline, as Bo Feekins was not too happy with what happened there, but with one minute left in the second half, we're down to mere seconds left in regulation time in the half. The throw in, the head up in the air, and the ball hits the top of the net. Fitzsimmons will have a play and a goal kick coming up. If I'm Fitz here, I'm just taking my time, not forcing anything. There's only 38 seconds left in the game. You're going to want to just control the ball, make good passes, and not let MIT get a chance with 30 seconds left. Just kick the ball away and send this game to extra time. And if we go to extra time tonight, we will see two 10-minute periods of extra time. If no one leads after that, we will go to penalty kicks. The, the countdown is on from Jake Kelly. Last-ditch effort for MIT to win it here in regulation. They will not. A long kick. And in the first playoff match in Emerson men's soccer history, we've had great ups, great downs in this match. But it's all tied after two halves have played. And we're going to extra time. We will see two 10-minute frames. If no one leads after those two frames, we will then see penalty kicks. And we've already seen Gregory Capaneso score on a penalty kick tonight. If he can do it again, that would be an incredible story. We will be right back in five minutes for extra time. You are watching Emerson Channel Sports.
Welcome back, everyone. We have extra time soccer, a coin toss being had right now between Ferguson and Miner. Toss has been completed. The rules of overtime are as follows. And as our PA address announcer, Jay Kelly, just mentioned, we will be playing two overtime periods, both 10 minutes to be played in full. There is no golden goal. If there is no lead by either team after both of those periods, that means we will have penalty kicks. As far to kick off here in overtime period number one. We are underway in the semifinal round from Rochfield. Emerson men's soccer playing their first playoff game ever in school history. And we could not have asked for a more exciting game, a 2-2 tie here in extra time. Okay. Fitzsimmons will pick this up to avoid any potential danger. Communication is definitely important here for both sides. Only a 10 minute half, so not much room for error. So they need to make sure that they communicate with their positioning and what they're trying to do and avoid mistakes that lead to easy goals. Well said. And now we see a pass through to Robinson. A centering pass for Esfa that was just a little too much on the end of it. Goes behind the box. And we see the ball played in. It will be played from the corner by John Flynn. Potentially the biggest corner of the season for MIT. On the way. A few fake heads. The ball is still in Emerson territory. They are able to clear this. And that one cleared well. Emerson needs to be aware of the confusion on defense. That's how MIT got their second goal. They created confusion and chaos in the box, distracted Fitz in the goal, and got it to the back of the net. The defense see. needs to be aware of that as we continue on here. Excellent point, and especially, like you said, they had three fake heads right in front, pretending like they were about to hit, and then they looked for a shot on the right side of the goal mouth. Luckily for Emerson, there was no shot that was able to be taken because of strong backline defense. Evan Lee is sandwiched, but he's able to get it out to in time to Del Banco, who passes this off to Rich. Rich plays this through the center, trying to redirect his trajectory, and instead, MIT now takes possession. Emerson has to take advantage of their opportunities. Can't have many turnovers, especially with how little time we have. They need to make sure that when they have possession that they're taking it. And now you're seeing on the field a little bit of a lack of discipline, and not really a little bit. This is a lot. It's uncalled for, and it's not. it does not belong in the sport. Throwing him down on the ground after there had already been some frustration. We've seen moments in this match where there are times to learn from aggression and from your emotions taking the better of you. And right here, it's another instance for MIT. There's no red card here. But another moment where we've seen emotions get the best of these players in the biggest game of each of their seasons. I'm surprised there was no card there. The ref has pulled lots of cards today. He's been very aggressive on the calls and pulling cards, and I'm surprised that there was no discipline there. It's definitely getting chippy here as we enter extra time. It's been chippy all game. The stakes are even higher now as we play extra soccer in playoff fashion. And another foul there we see. It's going to continue to play like that. Both sides are going to be aggressive. They're going to be hitting each other and tripping each other and 
yelling and stuff, and they it's going to continue, and the ref's going to have to watch out for that, but they have to be aware and not make any stupid decisions and allow penalties or free kicks that lead to chances. Very well said as Fitzsimmons is ready to kick this off after perhaps the most intense non-goal containing moments of this game. We have six minutes and 33 seconds to play left in the first overtime here. First of two 10 minute periods. No golden goal in this set. Emerson with a chance to attack. Trying to get by but thwarted on that right side by MIT's defense. A shot or a through pass, I'm not sure, but MIT's Gutvent, Gutvent gets to the ball. MIT, or sorry, Emerson needs to make sure they have bodies in the box here. They need to make sure that they have at least a couple people to put shots on. And now goal. we see we're we're seeing more. We are seeing more chippiness, like you're saying. There's a lot of pushes after after whistles and. We see a play between Blake and Lee where there really wasn't any contact and the refs decide to call it dead anyway. The refs are definitely letting them play a little bit. There's a lot of chippiness going on right now. The ref is letting them play. Emerson is already down a man. They have to be aware of that. They only have 10 men on the field. They can't afford to lose anyone else. They have to be aware of the fouls and the shoving and all the other stuff that's going on. And do you think it's possible that the referees are trying to tighten up the game now as we get late, trying to make sure that they can tell the players that they are in control of the rules here as things have gotten more aggressive? I think that's definitely possible. The refs have the power. They have the ability to call whistles and pull cards, and I think they're letting the players know that by calling whistles on slight things. It's been chippy the whole game. It's only getting worse here, and I think the refs... Kayla Blake with a header, and that one is in, and MIT leads. It's Jack Miner on the header, assisted by Kayla Blake. And MIT, in improbable fashion, in the way that this match was going, is now in front, 3-2. to two. Great goal there from MIT. They needed that. They're in the lead. But... Emerson still has time. We still have 15 minutes to go, five minutes in this period, 10 minutes in the next. They have time to get an equalizer and force penalties. They just need to stay within themselves, have patience, and find their shot, and hopefully tie this game up. And one thing we haven't mentioned yet today is, despite MIT's record being 8-8 eight and eight overall, they are 4-3-0 and oh in conference play, which is about dead even with Emerson in conference play, who is 4-2-1 and one with just that one draw. So when we talk about conference play, it's actually much more even than it appears to be in the overall record. And we're seeing that with a very even and back-and-forth match. And the stakes definitely help with that. In their first matchup, Emerson won pretty easily 3-1 to one, with an MIT own goal helping out the scoring. But in this game, the circumstances are much higher. It's a chance to play in the championship. For Emerson, it's their first ever playoff game. We can see that with the chippiness and the aggression. We have a good game. Emerson is scoring goals. MIT is scoring goals. And the circumstances come with that. And it's definitely a competitive game. And it's going to stay competitive throughout the rest of the match, regardless of if we go to penalties or not. And now, despite all that we've seen, the twists and turns, perhaps the most peculiar thing we see now is a ball on top of the softball netting. As we're about to see the corner right below that ball. Emerson needs to cause confusion here. No confusion there as able to step in his minor. And Robinson, who has great pace, is moving out in front. Emerson trying to close in, and they can't. And now it's a three-on-one. As far back the other way, and they'll slow it down. The opportunity was there, but just not able to play it back to the middle. As far did have Robinson, but only for a split second. And now they will have a throw in. Substitution for MIT, number 31, Andre Dumitrescu, back into the game. Replacing number 23. Caleb Asfa. Now we see Caleb Asfa, who had just been part of that attack back the other way, the counterattack coming out, and we see Andre Dumitrescu subbed in once more. MIT with possession. 
Booted well and booted out this time by Kapanesos, who scored the penalty to give us our second goal for Emerson. They get it in very quickly. Emerson playing with pace. Two minutes to go in the first overtime period. We will see a second 10-minute match. So do not leave the broadcast if you think this game is over in the next two minutes because there will be at least 10 minutes more. MIT leading 3-2. to two. Chance for Emerson. This is Rich, and it's quickly taken away from him by the veteran Hallinan. MIT continues to be aggressive. Emerson needs to take advantage of that. They're pushing up to try and score another goal. Emerson needs to start a counterattack. They sort of had that just now. They turned the ball over. They need to have a good counterattack and not turn the ball over and see what they can do in the next two minutes here. And like we were talking about earlier, the refs regaining their... Regaining their control over this match, just listening there for a moment to note who the yellow card was going to, but the referees have issued a yellow card to Will Siepel late in this one. As this ball is played in, off the leg and in! And Emerson has tied it, but no, they haven't because it's offside and this match is still 3-2. to two. I know you may have thought that this game is tied once more, but it's not. 3-2. to two just offside behind the back line form. One of the harder rules, I think, to understand there, but it was offside. He was behind the line. He was behind their form. There hasn't been a lot of offsides in this game. I believe that was only the first or second offsides for Emerson of the game. Unfortunately, it comes at the wrong time, but that's exactly what Emerson needed to do. They caused confusion in the box. It led to a goal. It got taken away, unfortunately, but if they continue to do that, they might have success in the second half. A minute and 20 to go in this first overtime period. There will be two. Currently 3-2 MIT. If it's tied after two, we will go to penalties. Robinson with the ball. MIT trying to grow their lead. A long kick. Bobbled and still saved by Fitzsimmons. As he tells his team to up the pace, trying to get them motivated. 57 seconds left time here for an injury on the field and it's once again it's Aiden Ferguson scary moment for Fritz there he needs to make sure he secures the ball with all that comes towards him can't let MIT get an even bigger lead they have to keep it to one goal and allow the Emerson offense to have a chance to tie this game up we now see Ferguson coming off and subbed he goes down to the ground clearly injured and Skyler Stark Ragsdale is going to be the sub for Aiden Ferguson, injured on that last play. Fitzsimmons gets it in deep, and it's bounced back out to the center line. It's now Evan Lee, the freshman defender, able to play it over into that left corner. As Jora Del Banco. Had a brief moment in the penalty box, but no shot was really available. No lane. Excellent defense by MIT on that possession. A throw-in now, or a corner, rather, for Emerson. And a chance to tie late in this first overtime as Once the clock again, rolls. They need to cause confusion. There's only 15 seconds left. they got to make something happen here. It's in, but the ball is cleared out. The countdown is on. Last seven seconds, MIT with one last boot to go. We go to the second overtime period. MIT leads after one overtime period. We will be back for the second. It is currently 3-2 MIT. And if somehow we are tied after two overtimes, we will go to penalty kicks. But as of right now, MIT leads 3-2. We will be right back. You're watching Emerson Channel Sports.
Welcome back, everyone. We are about to play the second overtime period in the first playoff game in Emerson men's soccer history. It's currently 3-2 MIT. Emerson started off with the lead. Then they were brought to a tie. And then late in the second half, with just under 20 minutes left to play, we saw a big-time penalty kick, which proved to be the biggest goal in program history for the moment being. And that was off the foot of Gregory Kapanesos. Now the game was later tied. And now we are in extra time. The second period we see in the first extra time period a goal scored by MIT to give them their first lead of the match. They've been trailing all day, but now they're leading. How do they play with that momentum and keep Emerson from tying it? And how does Emerson get back in this game to tie it and force penalty kicks or potentially score two or more to win this right now? I think for both teams, it's about going off their game plan. MIT is not a defensive team, but here there's only 10 minutes. They have to play defense. They can't let Emerson get past their line and get a goal. And for Emerson, it's the opposite. They've been a defensive team all season. They don't give up many goals. And this game especially, they have been defensive as well, but they need to be aggressive on offense. They need to push up the field and force MIT's defense to make a mistake and get that equalizing goal. We'll certainly see teams out of their comfort zone in the biggest spot of each team's season here. In the semifinals, the winner will move on and play in the championship game. We see a flag, and clearly unhappy is Evan Lee. MIT will have possession here and a throw-in. Nine minutes and 20 seconds to play in this match. If it's tied after then, we will go to penalties. If not, a winner will be declared and a spot in the championship game versus Babson to be had. This is Weiler for MIT playing it back and safely. And now we see a push to the ground and now a scuffle. And some nerves briefly getting the better of Emerson. And we see a yellow card. I believe that is to Evan Lee. The Lions and cannot afford. It's actually a yellow card on Caleb Blake on MIT, rather, also in that scrum. The Lions cannot afford penalties here in cards. They are already down 10 men, as we said before. They only have 10 men on the field. They cannot afford mistakes like that. They need to press MIT and force them to make mistakes, and they can't allow another goal for the engineers. And here come the engineers. Robinson. Through ball to Blake. Blake looking for a centering pass, and nobody was in the middle. So Emerson gets possession back. Running with it and by goalkeeper coming out. And now they'll call a stoppage as we see, of course, that Aaron Tyler, who is seeing his first action of the night here in the most important period of play for Emerson this season. Very aggressive play from Desai there. You don't usually see the goalie coming out in those situations. Could have had another costly mistake for his team. He is bailed out. Header available. A chance for Emerson. A shot blocked. And maybe the biggest defensive play of MIT season. If this score holds, it certainly will be. Good fit. Couldn't handle it. Emerson with another chance. A centering pass is available. Centered. And scored! And this game is tied! Everyone from the bench runs! And Emerson has tied this match! <laughs> Bedlam at Roch Field. Bedlam in Boston. Unbelievable goal here for the Lions. The crowd here at the playground is going crazy. That is the biggest shot of Emerson soccer's history. This game is insane. We have seven and a half minutes left for a spot in the championship. It is anyone's game at this point. Holy cow. And if this holds, we will see penalty kicks. It's 3-3. It's Thomas Chuaki. It's the biggest goal 
of Emerson's program history. We've seen two of those today. Every moment in this match means so much to both teams, especially for Emerson in their first playoff game. It's, it's really a game that I think that if Emerson can come out on top and you learn so much in just one game, especially with all the ups and downs, being on top, playing from ahead, playing from behind, getting back into the game. And now we're all tied. So now we're back dead even. What needs to happen for both sides to be in front at the end of this period? I think now they're back tied. They should revert back to their strategies they had at the beginning of the game. MIT needs to continue to press, put pressure on MIT's or Emerson's defense and try and force another goal. While Emerson, they need to continue to play good defense, not allow MIT to get that winning goal, and have the offense do this, what they're doing right now, create opportunities and try and get that goal. Have patience, find their shot, and try and get the winning goal. And another correction as it was a lot of traffic again on the Emerson goal. It wasn't scored by Thomas Chuaki. It was Bo Fekins, the defender, scoring this match, scoring to make this match even again. 3-3 with 6.44 to go in play. An excellent save made by Fitzsimmons. Fantastic save there by Fitz. Great shot from MIT. That's what they want to do. They want to create those opportunities, pepper the goal. Fitzsimmons rose to the challenge. Amazing save. Now Emerson has to take advantage here of the corner kick. They can't allow MIT to cause confusion. They have to get the ball out and create a counterattack moving forward. We'll see if they can counterattack maybe off of a good takeaway on a corner. Corner in. Shot goes wide. Who touched it last? It appears that we'll see, yes we will, it'll be another corner for MIT, and now we can see this game that can be played late in matches where you get corner on corner on corner until you can get a clear or a goal. They need to be careful here. MIT has done a good job of creating confusion in the box. It's led to some goals for them. The defense has to stay stout for Emerson and make sure that the confusion doesn't lead to a goal and start a counter attack. Here's the play in. Head goes straight up in the air. A chance for Gunfent. Could be a big time shot. And it'll be played down by Emerson. Will they be able to clear? Weiler in the area as long side. Feekins, who's able to get it out. MIT with another chance. MIT. Dumitrescu. It's Hollinen, who's seen a lot of action in this right corner. Weiler unable to handle that one. We see the ball go out. Wesley Jackson holds it in. Subs coming in. It's going to be Jora Del Banco coming back on the field. Thomas Chuaki coming off for Emerson. Del Banco coming back in. He's been all over the offense for the Lions today. He's created many chances on the outside of the sideline. They're going to look to him to continue to do that, get the ball into the box, and maybe create a chance to get that game-winning goal. Here in double overtime with just under five minutes to play. It's a 3-3 tie. Here comes a chance, and the shot goes wide, but now another chance here for Caleb Blake. MIT trying to strike late, a chance to go to the championship. Blake plays it back along the left side. Back to the middle, trying to get it out. Emerson succeeds, but it's back in. Brilliant play off of the foot for Emerson to get it back, but now it's Hallin in with a drive and hit the post, and it stays out, and this game is still tied. Hallin in, who scored five goals this year and a goal in this game, just hit the right side of the post, and that is one you'll think about if MIT ends up losing this game. Great shot there, MIT. Wanted to do that, wanted to force pressure, but they need Emerson needs to communicate. Fitz called for the ball. The defenders kicked it out back to MIT. The communication is going to be key here if Emerson wants to keep MIT out of the goal. And you're saying, you're talking about the communication. What do they need to do to communicate that they need to do a better job of getting this ball out of their end and back on the other side, communicating really rather not that, but communicating that they need to better defend and better find passing lanes. Well, Fitz needs to make sure that he's telling his defenders, I got the ball, it's on me, I got it. Make sure he's telling his defenders that, he, that they know that he has the ball. And for the defenders, they need to not be cute. They need to just get the ball out. doesn't matter where it goes. Just boot it as far as you can and hope that an Emerson line is there to get the ball and just not try and 
pass and dinker around and let MIT get a chance. Hallinan gets it in late. A chance. Luckily for Emerson, they're able to step in front. It would have been an open net shot for MIT. Here comes a play. The crowd briefly goes wild for Aaron Tyler. But now it's MIT on the counterattack. Dumitrescu gets it through. Weiler looking for an opportunity. Robinson boots it out on accident. And we see a throw in now. It's Guntvet. He passes it in and finds his teammate James Simon. They then hit Jack Miner. An MIT player down on the field and hopefully okay. It's Dumitrescu who is being helped out by Emerson players. Mallet calling for other players on MIT and it looks like he is going to be okay with a slight limp on the field talking to the coach now. We've seen it all game, players down, especially in the second half, now into overtime. Whether or not they're real, this looks a little painful, but whether or not they're real, there's definitely mind games being played, slowing the clock down, getting possession back. We've seen it all game and it's only getting heightened here as we approach penalty kicks. And also, is there something to be said for the wear and tear of a long season and then getting to this point, you're in the final minutes of a game. It's a longer game than usual. You wouldn't be playing this long normally. We're here in the final minutes of the second overtime. Is there some wear and tear in that aspect? There definitely is. They play a long season, around 20 games. It's a long season. Tonight, it's a long game. They've played two halves of regular soccer then a, another half of extra time and they're in their other half of overtime and it's cold it's dark it's definitely very cold tonight so they're gonna it's gonna hurt a little more so that definitely plays a part in it great opportunities there for MIT but nothing comes up their way they keep possession and they're still in Emerson's end a pass straight on the chest of Weiler trying to play it back no bicycle potential there and now we're going to have Mallet make a play on the left side but he's unable to get it out and MIT's back on the counter attack a clear by Emerson unable to evade MIT attackers Blake plays Emerson it off. has to get the ball out here they're being too cute in MIT's half they have to get the ball back into their half and not let MIT get a shot on goal Ethan Reich in the middle of the field Reich passes it off a shot, and it's blocked. Reich again, seeing his first action. Good play by Miner, and a brilliant pass to get it off his foot, but a little bit too much on the kick. The ball goes out of play, past the end line, and here come some subs. We Fitz see has to be careful here, make sure he knows where he's going with his passes, be deliberate, can't let MIT get a chance for an easy goal here with a minute left to play. And we see Will Seeple come back onto the pitch. One minute left in overtime here. If this match is still tied, we will see penalties to decide it. Caleb Blake coming back out for Will Seeple. Will Seeple coming on, rather. Blake coming out. Headed by MIT's back line. We now see Del Banco, but he's unable to kick that free to a teammate. And now back the other way is Siepel. Siepel feeds through. Another extra pass. Here's Hallinan. Chance for Robinson. Development here in the final 20 seconds. And it's booted out again by Wesley Jackson, who's played an excellent role in that back corner alongside his counterpart, Cade Mallett. Final 17 seconds here. No extra time to be played. If we're still tied, we will be going to penalties. Will we need it? And we'll see a stoppage on this throw-in. Ten, Ten seconds. Nine, the clock eight, rolls. Seven, six, we will five, see penalty four, kicks here three, at Rochfield. Three, we're going to have the ultimate finish. You wanted a playoff game, Emerson College. You've got a playoff women's team. You've got a playoff men's team. Soccer has been exceptionally exciting recently at Emerson College. The women won earlier this week on Tuesday in a double overtime match right here at Rochfield to advance. And now the men will be going into a shootout, a penalty kick shootout to decide who goes to the championship game. Emerson trying to play at Babson. So is MIT. 
and Emerson trying to end their first playoff game with positive emotions rather than negative. It's definitely a big step now in the game. Both teams in penalty kicks. This is what you hope for as a little kid. Penalty kicks to send your team to the championship. They're fighting. Both goalies need to be on their games today. Both all the shooters that line up on the spot need to know where they're going, have confidence in their shots. Emerson nailed a penalty earlier to give them the lead. Um, they need to focus on that again, make sure their shots are where they want to be, and maybe they'll have a good chance of getting to the championship. And when going through pre-game pre notes, I had noticed that Desai's favorite childhood sports memory, well, not really childhood, but sports memory, was that he had made a game-winning save in penalties to advance in the state playoffs. And so he's again going to be in that position again for MIT. Both goalkeepers have allowed three. Whether that's their fault is up for debate. There's been a lot of mismatch and a lot of um, a redirection in front of the net, misdirection rather. And we're going to see one goalkeeper either make a dramatic save to win this or a shooter making a dramatic goal to win this. And so in this moment, you say this is exactly what you play for, what you dream of as a little kid in your backyard, kicking into goals. What are the thoughts running through your head if you're on the field as a goalkeeper and as a shooter? You can't, you can't think about it that much. I played goalie in high school a little bit. Penalty kicks are stressful. The shooter's close. There's no defenders. You don't know where they're going to go. You have to guess, but you have to stay within yourself. Just know that... Like, follow the shot, follow the shooter's hips, look where they're going to go, have confidence in yourself. If you're the goalie, have confidence in yourself that you can save the shot. If you're the shooter, have confidence in yourself that you can make the shot, put the shot where you want it to go, and can't let the pressure get to you. Just stay calm and know that your shots can go where they need to go and have faith in yourself. Okay, so now some penalty kick rules for you. It's going to be a best of five penalties, so whichever team is ahead after five penalties will win the match. If we are tied after five penalties, we go to sudden death, which doesn't mean that the first team that scores wins. It just means that the first team that wins a direct one and one set will win the match. So if whoever shoots first scores and the team that is away does not, they win the match. But if the team that shoot first doesn't score and the team that shoots second scores, the match is over as well. We now see on the field a pre-penalty kick shootout coin toss for the, elect, for the choice to elect to defer or to shoot first. There's really nothing that I think you dream more of as a player than this, these moments. It's really been a, a picture-perfect game in terms of intensity, entertainment. There's been aggression. There's been chippiness. There's been uh, emotion. It's really a, a, truly a spectacle here today. I mean, you mentioned it earlier, this is Emerson's first ever playoff game for men's soccer, and this is exactly what you expect from that. They have a great game. They're going to penalties for a chance to go to the championship. For MIT, they didn't have the best year. They finished 500. This is a chance for them to turn their season around and prove that they deserve to be here and put their spot in the championship. So for both sides, there's a lot riding on this. Emerson has given us an exciting game for their first ever one in history, and we'll see how it ends. So Emerson won the first coin toss, and what that means is they get to choose which goal they're going to be shooting on. But MIT won the second coin toss, which means that they will be electing to shoot second, which means that they are at the advantage in terms of if Emerson doesn't score and MIT does, they can walk the game off on the final shot. It's, def it's definitely interesting, the strategy going in there, like which side is more comfortable for you? Why do you want to go first? Why do you want to go second? It's definitely something to think about, and we'll look back on it no matter which side this game goes. And there's definitely something to the psychology. Do you want to shoot first to take the pressure off? There's no pressure. Nobody's shot yet. But then also having the last say in the match, 
getting to shoot second. There's the pressure, but there's also, you have the power in your hands. And so we'll see what happens here as Gregory Kapanesos, the only player for Emerson who has shot penalties this season, he scored a penalty in this game. He was two for two coming into this game, three for three, the team's three for three, he shot them all. This is where he thrives. Will he be four for four? Let's see, let's find out right here, right now at Roch Field. Emerson and MIT tied. Three to three, the first penalty coming up. Big shot here. He's never taken a bigger shot in his life. The fans here at the playground are all lining up along the sideline to watch this penalty shootout. First game in Emerson history in the playoffs for soccer, and they've given us a good one. The first playoff men's soccer game indeed. The women advanced in double overtime on Tuesday. The men trying to join them here in the penalty kicks. All the fans lined up on the far side. Teams with their arms around each other, separated by a referee. Kapanesos has already hit the biggest kick of his life today, and he's going to have to take a second one. It may not have been something he would have envisioned back with 19 minutes left in the second half, but it's something that he will do nonetheless. A shot to be taken against Desai. In a game where there has been aggression against the other, a loss of control of emotions, incredible twists and turns, questionable moments, exceptional passes, shots, goals, saves. It all comes down to this penalty shootout. Best of five, Kapanesos will shoot first. And he scores. And so Kapanesos is four for four on penalties this season. Great shot there. Bottom right corner. Not, enough, not a lot of power. Just enough to get it past the goalie. Desai guessed wrong. Dove to the other side. Perfect shot there as Emerson takes a one nothing lead in penalties. And so Kapanesos' first goal gives Emerson some padding here to work with. Obviously five, but it's still a big kick nonetheless. Every shot counts. Every save counts. And like you said, it's a guessing game. And now we're going to see kicking for MIT. It's Ethan Reich, who hasn't seen much action in this game. Here's the shot, and he scores. And so this, we're once again tied 1-1 here in the shootout. The winner after five moves on to the championship game. And now shooting second here is going to be, it is going to be for Emerson. We have Chris Molinos, who is a freshman forward. Good deke there on the goal by MIT. Had Fitz going to the right. He shot it left. And we are all tied here in the second leg of penalties. Quick shot. And it's saved and could be a ginormous save by Desai, denying the freshman Molinos. And we still stay 1-1 advantage MIT if they can score here. Interesting tactic by Molinos there. Facing away from the goalie, turned around quickly, took a quick shot. Desai was ready for it. Guessed right, knew where the shot was going and saved it. Big save for MIT. Now here comes a big shot for Hedrick Meyer. And he scores! And it's 2-1 MIT. And they've got the advantage here. Two shots through both sides in penalties. Emerson needs to put the ball in the back of the net here, put some pressure on MIT, and Fitz, next time he steps between the sticks, needs to make a save or force a shot wide. MIT is two for two on penalties so far, two great shots, and we'll see what happens the rest of the way. Now it'll be midfielder freshman Gabe Rich, who has seen plenty of action in the attacking zone today. A big penalty kick here. He dekes him and he scores! And this is all tied up again. It's 2-2, and now all the pressure back on Fitzsimmons to make a big time save and keep this back even. We're going to be seeing John Flynn take the kick for Great. MIT. Great shot there to tie it up for Emerson. Pressure on Fitz here, he can't let it get to him. He's gotta stay cool, trust himself, know that he can do it, and we'll see if he can come away with a block here. John Flynn with a big kick. Fitzsimmons with a big goal opportunity. Flynn's kick is saved by 
Fitzsimmons and Emerson goes wild on the sideline and we're all still even after three shots. We go to the fourth and once again, every shot counts, every save counts. Fitzsimmons did exactly what you said he needed to do and Emerson did exactly what you said they needed to do on the penalties. Here they are with more momentum now and the momentum arguably in their hands and the, f the right foot of Phil Hahn, a senior defender, could put Emerson in front, 3-2 here in the fourth penalty kick. Here's the shot. A fake and a goal, and Phil Hahn has put Emerson on top. 3-2. And so now we will see the fourth kick coming up here for MIT. Fitz stayed within himself the last time up, made the save. Emerson has the lead now. The pressure is still on him, but like I said, he needs to trust himself, know that he can make a save. If he comes up with a save here, puts Emerson in the driver's seat with only a couple sets left to go in penalties. And if we see a save here and a goal by Emerson, they will walk it off into the championship game against Babson. Joe Gross to shoot for MIT in the biggest kick of his life. Fitzsimmons looking for the save of his life. Here we go. The kick. Gross. Scores. And we're all tied at three, and we will go five. Emerson needs to score here. Tie game. They need to put the pressure on. F force Fitz to make a brilliant save and get them into the championship. They need to put pressure on MIT and see what happens going forward in penalties as we will be playing all five sets here. We now see the graduate, Skylar Stark Ragsdale. He's going to be kicking the biggest shot of his life, potentially the last shot of his career. And right here, his collegiate career at least. These are the moments that you tell your grandkids about, folks. Big shot coming up here for Ragsdale. Stark Ragsdale scores! And now it's up to Fitzsimmons. They're one save away. And nonchalantly, you see him walk to his team as if he just did nothing at all. Starks Ragsdale, la potentially the last kick of his career. He comes up so huge, the graduate student. He's been through the thick and thin with Emerson soccer for many years. He's never seen the playoffs until today. Comes up with a huge kick, and it's now up to Fitz to send the Lions to the new MAC champion. This could be the last one save. This could be the last kick of MIT season, here it is. He hit the post and stays out. Emerson on to Babson. Unbelievable finish, fans storm the field. And Emerson has won. Em Emerson put the pressure on, forced MIT to make the goal to score to send it to extra penalties. They could not handle the pressure. The shot goes off the crossbar, and for the first time in Emerson men's soccer history, they are going to the new MAC championship, sending the MIT engineers back home to Cambridge. And on to Babson in incredible fashion. We saw ups, we saw downs, we saw ties, we saw trails, we saw leads. They disappeared. They go into the second overtime, they tie the game, and then they get to penalties. We see huge goals left and right for both sides. And of course, now the biggest save of Fitzsimmons' career, and there, where the goalie couldn't get to the ball. He hits the top post perfectly, and unfortunately for MIT, unable to convert James Simon with the miss, and we talked about Hallinan hitting the post earlier when he hit it, and if Emerson won this game, we'd talk about them remembering that post, but that post, that left top crossbar, crossbar and out. The crossbar can be your best friend and your worst enemy, and today... You see, it's MIT's worst enemy. This was a great game. MIT had a great season. They should be proud of themselves. They put up a very good fight here at Roch, and Emerson should be also proud of themselves. This is the best season they've ever had in school history. They're playing in the championship. They did everything right. They came back from deficits multiple times. They stepped up when they needed to in penalties, and now they're playing for a shot at a new MAC title. And so now we see the two-seeded Emerson Lions advance to play the number one seed, Babson. And they're known for their dominance in their program's history, always being the best. 
Emerson, the two seed, their first playoff in men's history. Here they are with a chance to do exactly what you dream of. It's gonna be a great game against Babson. They went undefeated in conference play, defeating Emerson in the regular season. Emerson is gonna be up to the challenge. It's number one versus number two. The two best teams in the conference going at it for a championship. It's gonna be a good one, folks. And hopefully Emerson can pull it out against perennial strong suit team Babson. And this was truly an unbelievable match through and through. We really did see everything that soccer is about on this pitch tonight. We saw the emotion get the better of players. We saw the humanity of the sport. And we also saw the great joys felt with success and the great sadness and sorrow felt with failure when you thought you had it. And we saw a back and forth there was at no point in this match where I really knew what team was going to win because it seemed like this team's got it, this team's got it, this, this is a locked game, I can't see where this is going. And we came through with this incredible finish, the most shots possible without extra shots. And it was a 4-3 to three victory in penalties after a 3-3 three -three match. What a win for Emerson College. I mean, a very emotional game for both sides. Obviously, we've said it a bunch. Emerson's first ever game in the playoffs. MIT, not the best season for them. They wanted to prove themselves. They came out firing. Emerson fired right back. They stood up to the challenge. We look back at the mistakes of the goalie and all the pressures and all the cards, and both teams lived up to the expectations, and they put on a great show for us. And, of course, Skylar Stark Ragsdale, the graduate transfer, scoring the goal that ended up being the match winning goal and Fitzsimmons making the save of his life the goal of your life the save of your life unbelievable finish for Hugh and Fitzgerald and Evan Sherrard so long thank you for tuning in and thank you to my great crew that I've had up here all game it's been an unbelievable game good night and thank you for watching Emerson Channel Sports